the words of the Italian philosopher Niccolo Machiavelli, whoever wants to foresee the future must first look at the past and then imagine all that old stuff looking more futury and space-like. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up anything that you want. All you have to do is dial in toll-free, 855-450-FREE. Coming up uh, tonight, the story I really, really wanted to talk about last night, but we didn't get a chance to get to it. It's just the way things go here on Free Talk Live. The breaking news about a Free State Project participant who is alleged to have been involved in the Silk Road as one of the main administrators of the site. We'll get into that with you tonight here. It's Ian. Chris. And Mark. And Chris is joining us from ChristopherCantwell.com. Actually, you and Mark just uh, just wrapped up another two hours, I believe. Of yeah, two hours commercial-free, uh, some garbage podcast, and uh, went over a, a variety of subjects uncensored, and you can find that at uh, somegarbagepodcast.com. Yeah, you was... might be able to get it on iTunes now. The last time we talked about it, I know that I had my RSS feed was broken, and I just fixed it. So. Okay, well, that's good to know. Yeah. And I know that uh, Mark was on for the whole show, and at one point... Uh, I was listening in the beginning, and I sent out word to the, the Free Talk Live social networks to kind of give folks a heads up they could listen live. And you guys apparently were going through the seven dirty words. So content that you cannot ever find here on Free Talk Live. It's my contention uh, that the seven dirty words are only four. Okay, fair enough. That's so about let's as repeat them as, now. And... That's about as deep as we can get into that subject. <laughs> uh, we're I could actually, give initials. <laughs> we're actually going to jump into the phones here. we got some folks waiting patiently. And Dave, because again, you can call in about anything. We'll talk about the Silk Road coming up here in a moment. Dave, in Nevada, you're on one of the amp lines. Hey, Dave. Hey, guys. How's it going? What's on your mind? Um, I had called in, I think, a few times with updates on a case that I had going on for obstruction of an officer and just to uh, briefly... Uh, for people that haven't heard it, I was arrested for a structure of an officer. The officer claimed I was sitting in a car on private property. Uh, they claimed that they asked me to get out of the car, and I said, no, F you. And then they claimed they asked me again, which, of course, wouldn't happen because if I said that once, you know, they dragged me out of the car. They pulled me out of the car. I had huge bruises all over me. Mm. And they claimed that they got a call for a uh, home invasion, which was ridiculous. They never made a report on it, anything. Uh, so they charged me with destruction of an officer. I, I took it to trial. Of course, you don't get a jury trial in the state of Nevada for a misdemeanor sentence uh, where the maximum penalty is six months in jail, $1,000 fine. So I appealed that to district court, appealed it to the Nevada Supreme Court. And I guess when you appeal to the Nevada Supreme Court, it doesn't stay the decision. So the minor court decision still applied. Um, although when I was in court in May, when I was going to file it, uh, they scheduled. I have to take impulse control classes, which is ridiculous. It should be the officers that have to so take it. So just to clarify, um, just to clarify what uh, what yeah. happened here, you were pulled over and well, dragged. I was, no, I was in a in a car on private property, uh, just sitting in the car. Just sitting in the car. Okay. Yeah. And you were uh, told to leave the car, and you didn't leave in the way the officer wanted uh, wanted you to leave, and they pulled you from the car. Well, that's what they claim. I mean, basically, they came up to the car, uh, you know, with a gun pretty much pointed at my head, because that's the level the hand would be when I'm sitting in a car. And it was more like, you know, questioning, well, why are you, you know, like, what did I do? Why are you here bothering me, whatever? And they didn't like that. Um, so they just ripped me out of the car. Now, they say that they asked me to get out of the car um, and that they asked me twice, but that wasn't the case. But what mm -hmm. they said was because uh, I didn't get out of the car when they asked, they said that's obstructing, obstructing their investigation mm. with that they never made because there was never any report on anything else. And you were convicted and the, of that uh, at the district court and then a slightly higher court oh, at, level? Well, at, the, at the Las Vegas City Court. Mm -hmm. Then from there, I appealed it to district, district. court. Then they, uh, you know, just agreed with the judge, and then I appealed it to the Nevada Supreme Court. Right, and then and that's where you're telling um, us the district court, even though you've appealed, they're going to, the sentence moves forward. So what was the sentence yeah, in that case? The, the, the municipal court, not the district court, because it went back to the first court. Okay. So it was a $1,000 fine, um, which is actually wow. 1137 because they add some fees in yeah, or something. Yeah, tax. And <laughs> it, it, uh, uh, what do you call it? Yeah. A um, wow. impulse control class, which cost three hundred fifteen dollars, 
uh, 90-day suspended sentence. So they actually scheduled the classes the last time I was at court to tell them I was appealing to the Supreme Court. My lawyer told me that it didn't matter because I appealed to the Supreme Court. So I guess I found out today that that's not the case. Oh, no. um, but I did go online, and I found out that online they posted that they're not going to take the case anyway, although they haven't notified my lawyer yet. Um, so, so, meaning, hold I, on. You know, so thought, just to clarify, when yeah, the Supreme sorry. Court doesn't take a case, it means the lower court ruling stands. Well, it does anyway. Yeah, but I yeah. mean, it does anyway until they rule on it, and, and that's what I was saying. If, that even but now they've decided the they're court, not going to take the case. If if I could, I yeah, mean, not, what 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 exactly was it that you were appealing to the higher court? You're you're saying that because you didn't get a jury trial on the B misdemeanor, is this what you're appealing? Was no, the grounds for your appeal? Uh, I don't know what my lawyer uh, filed as a specific. <laughs> Uh, grounds this for is the one appeal, of the issues but... with uh, with having an attorney is that a lot of people who hire the attorney they don't know what the attorney's doing and right. uh, they they really you know they don't have any training in law I don't have any training in law but I've been you know kind you've of had learned some training the, learned the hard way <laughs> um, and if I have an attorney and I have had an attorney a couple of times I want to read everything that guy's filing I want to yeah. know what he's saying what he's doing on my behalf. That guy is so-called representing me in this crazy uh, legal land system, and I want to make sure I'm satisfied with that attorney's ability to to think and, and you know write out legal paperwork and things like that. So if you don't know what your attorney is doing and you're filing to Supreme Court, uh, I mean, that sounds like it could be an expensive thing to do. I don't know what oh, you've spent yeah. on. Yeah. So what I, you... I did get the. I mean, and it, it, actually, anybody can read what they filed. It's online. Sure, but you, know, but you they should be the one who's reading it. I don't remember off the top yeah. of my head what yeah. the argument was. Okay. But... Gotcha. And now, with, what have you paid, the... by Sorry, the way, for this uh, this attorney's services? And has so, he been your attorney through the whole way through every court level of the uh, court? Yes and no. So the, I, I and I actually wrote this down because I knew you were going to ask me that. So the first, uh, I had a lawyer at the uh, municipal court level. Uh, first, but I had him for the municipal court as well. So in the middle of the municipal court case, I switched lawyers. So my first lawyer gave me a discount because it was uh, a friend's brother's law firm. So they had charged me $600. Then, and this is only because also it's in the city court. If it was higher in district court, it would be more money. Mm -hmm. But um, $600 then to actually go to trial in the city court, I paid the new lawyer a thousand dollars, so that was sixteen hundred. Mm. So then, to appeal to district court, it was fifteen hundred dollars, and then three hundred dollars for transcripts. How they so we're up to three grand so far, roughly, ridiculous. roughly three grand. So uh, thirty-four hundred. Mm. Yep. All right. Then twenty-five hundred to the Supreme Court, regardless of whether they take the case or not. So you pay twenty five hundred dollars to the Supreme Court to ask them if you can appeal, and then they tell you no, and that's right. non refundable. Oh, wow, yeah, that's well, I haven't paid all of it yet, but yes, I owe them twelve hundred and fifty dollars. So you went into debt. You went into debt with the Supreme Court. How do they? Do? What do they take a payment plan from you? How does that work out? No, no, that's my lawyer. Like I paid. Um, oh, oh, the, you know, I've had the same lawyer, oh, so the, I, I paid twelve hundred and fifty up. Up front for the Supreme Court, and I paid him everything else, so I still. So owe wait, him half. so he paid just to, just to be clear, the twenty five hundred dollars wasn't just the filing fee at the Supreme Court. That was whatever the attorney's filing fee fees. is plus the attorney's fees to file. Is that what you're saying? It was. I mean, I just gave him twenty five hundred dollars total. At the end of the day. Yeah, so I where are we at now? We're at eight thousand dollars. I've lost track. So well, that's fifty nine hundred the, right there. Right? Fifty nine hundred. But okay. then. So then I am, I got extorted by it goes back to the city court. So I'm getting extorted by them. It's eleven hundred and thirty seven dollars, and the maximum fine's a thousand. That's what they gave me, and then they and throw that's their the fees fine. on so there. Final damage: yeah. attorneys fees, court fees, uh, the the actual sentenced uh, fee. We're talking about close to eight thousand. You know, eight thousand. Well, thirty seven hundred and fifty two dollars. I'm sorry, what? About 73, sorry, I'm, I'm 70. dyslexic. So about 7500 $7, $7, And ultimately, all of this you paid to lose the case. Yeah, I could have, uh, I guess, took their ridiculous plea deal and, you know, said I did something I didn't and paid, I think, probably like $600 and then $600 to the employer, maybe about 1200 
And how do you feel about uh, pay- paying eight thousand dollars to go through this experience? In fact, I'd like to like you to answer that when we come back. Hang on, Dave, if you can stick with us. More with Dave in Nevada. 855 450 free. I'll be going to court next month and I will not have an attorney. This is Free Talk Live. The results described should not be considered as guarantees of your actual earnings or profits. Results not typical. Check terms and conditions for income disclosures. How would you like to work from home, be your own boss, and make great money working online on your own time? These people saw the opportunity and took it. Working online changed my life. I was able to get out of my high-pressure corporate job. It all started with HomeIncomeOnline.com. I love that I'm able to spend more time with my kids while making over $10,000 per month. Go to HomeIncomeOnline.com today and enter special code 2121 to learn about a multi-billion dollar industry that's just waiting for you to tap into its incredible earning potential. Full and part-time opportunities are currently available. I just graduated college, and I'm making more money than I ever imagined. Are you ready to start making real money working online from home? Just go to HomeIncomeOnline.com now and enter special code 2121 to get your risk-free information kit. That's www.HomeIncomeOnline.com, special code 2121. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938, 877-357-9938. Farmers keep livestock lean and healthy with a mineral-rich diet. Then, before market, they cut off minerals, leaving them to crave high-calorie grains. If weight control is this easy, why prescribe surgery for humans? Introducing Longevity. You could avoid 900 diseases by getting 90 essential nutrients from Longevity. Check out 90 for Life at tobeyoungagain.com or call 855-79-YOUNG. That's 855-79-YOUNG or tobeyoungagain.com. Longevity. It's all about saving money, getting healthy, and creating wealth. Free Press Publications is an independent alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary at fpp.cc as well as weekly news in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com. The monthly newspaper, FPP News at news.fpp.cc and books at shop.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at fpp.cc. That's fpp.cc, as in Creative Commons. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. Are you tired of governments murdering people around the world? Stop using their money. There is an alternative. Bitcoin is a stateless, free market, non-political currency. Bitcoin cannot be inflated or controlled by any government. By using their money, you are helping the state. Stop doing it. You have an incredible alternative available now. Learn it. Use it. Spread it. Get started with Bitcoin at WeUseCoins.com. That's WeUseCoins.com. You can connect with the Liberty Radio Network via our Facebook page at facebook.lrn.fm. That's facebook.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. Coming up, we'll talk about the Silk Road, a development finally in the case 
of one of the other guys involved. You've heard a lot about uh, Ross Ulbricht, the man alleged to be the creator and the main administrator of the Silk Road, the underground marketplace. But you haven't heard much about Andrew Jones, and we're going to tell you about him uh, here in a little bit. Your call is certainly welcome. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. And I don't know what the bill is going to be for Ross Ulbricht as far as the attorney's bills, but it's not going to be cheap. And we're talking about attorneys, and we're going to get back into that here. Um, talking about getting hosed, uh, in my opinion, by attorneys. We'll get back into that. Also, want to let you know where you can go to get Bitcoin, Dogecoin, Litecoin, Blackcoin, and Darkcoin, and you can get it with cash. Money order, check, or wire transfer. All of it done at ExpressCoin.com. It's so easy to use. In fact, ExpressCoin prides themselves on their customer service. They want to make sure you get the coin you're looking for and you get a great price because you can actually get up to $40 worth of Bitcoin. And I believe, Mark, correct me if I'm wrong, that uh, this code, this FTL code that you used to get $40 or up to $40 worth of Bitcoin for no transfer fee, that also applies to the other coins they're selling that's correct site. okay so if you want to get 40 to up to 40 dollars worth of dogecoin which is a lot of dogecoin uh you can get that too and get it for no transfer fee by using code ftl at expresscoin.com it's also now available in canada again that's expresscoin.com so we've got dave on the line he's calling from nevada got a charge of an obstructing government administration the, the equivalent of whatever that is there in nevada this is uh, obstruction of an officer obstruction but, of an officer yeah. And this was a misdemeanor charge, not a not a class A or whatever the, the equivalent no. is there in Nevada. Do you have a different different? It'd be classes? better if it was, because then I would have got a, a jury trial. Right. So they they set it at a level at which you could not have a jury trial, which is very common here in New Hampshire as well. You went to the bench trial, you lost, and then you had an attorney the entire time. You actually had a couple different attorneys, but ultimately you lost at the district court. You lost at the lo city court. You lost at the district court. Uh, the Supreme Court wouldn't hear the case. And so the case was remanded back to the city court. They imposed their fine. And ultimately, you spent approximately $7,400 on various attorney's fees and court filing fees and the, the fine as well. Is that uh, pretty much a summation of where we've been so far? Yeah, and along with that, I spent two and a half days in jail. Oh, I had lovely. huge bruises all over me. From being um, manhandled by the police? Yeah, from thrown mm -hmm. on the ground, knee in my back. Um, right. I also had my hand was numb oh, for wow. about uh, two months because they had handcuffed me to a chair for about five hours. Um, you know, not to mention all the stress and, and, and dealing with it. And, um, yeah, so it's just, you know, it, it, one thing, not that it's okay for the government to extort you and do all these things, regardless of what you do. But, I mean, if it was actual a real crime that had a victim or something like that, that's you know, one thing, but I mean, this is basically, you know, uh, a crime against, it, it's a crime created by the state. I sure. mean, it's really yeah, this is, it is. This is something like, I didn't even do. But. This is like we've heard, uh, I've, I've had, I have friends who have been arrested for resisting arrest yep. that they're and arresting all, you. Right? Yeah, exactly. That this is your only charge. Right. Like what is the, what is the crime that you're arresting me for if my charge is for resisting arrest? I mean, what, what was the government, what was the officer doing that he's now being obstructed? Well, I obstructed him and harassing me and, and bothering me without, uh, without cause. And it's unfortunately, entirely too common i just <clears throat> we were actually like talking like during the break i'm like it it, it would seem to me yeah, i hope that you never have to go through this again right obviously and i and i hope that none of our listeners ever have to go through anything like this but if you do i would encourage all of you to to try to understand what it is that your attorney is doing i understand that it can be like extraordinarily difficult when you told me that you had uh that you were not uh, sure what your grounds for your appeal were this like blew my mind it's like as if you went to like a mechanic and he just said mm. your car is mess give money and like you know <laughs> you just and you just handed you know imagine Imagine you just handed a mechanic seven thousand dollars because he said that you had some problem. Like we would generally expect anybody in any other profession to to give us uh, some explanation of what it is that they were doing that we were paying them for. And however, for some reason, like people see like attorneys as people who just they you, you just pay them and they just do stuff. You mm -hmm. just pay them and they do stuff. And like they are the some of the most dishonest people in the world. <laughs> and people put it's more true. trust in them than anybody. It's amazing yeah, to me. Watch out. Right. And, and and I didn't, it's not that I did that. I mean, from initially, and that's why I changed lawyers, because I didn't feel like they were doing enough. And I did pay a lot of attention. And then just, you know, even after being, you know, found guilty initially, which was totally ridiculous, because the judge even looked at all the pictures of these bruises and, 
And when I say, you know, from my wrist to my elbow is, is like a huge, you know, bruise. And I had posted some pictures online as well, but, um, you know, for them to come to that conclusion there, and it is is just insane. So I, I did to a to a point, and that is my fault, and I know better because I've did, dealt with you know when you lawyers first met with the attorney, paid more attention to it. But. So, th- so there was one attorney who kind of carried you through most of these, right? You said there was a first guy, and you dumped him, well, the, and you brought yeah, the first. The first guy though was only in the city court, right. so he just took it to right before trial, um, because right. once I and decided, then you brought well, another gonna... one in for the trial. Now, the, yeah, one, because, the yeah, one that you brought sorry, in for the trial, when you met with him and you laid out your case, uh, what did he say to you? I mean, did he say to you, yeah, this is winnable? Or did he say, you know, this probably isn't going to happen, but I'll do it for you? What was his uh, his pitch? You know, it, it's, it's been because this has actually happened two years ago or mm-hmm. um, now, so... I, I, well, actually, over two years. It was Memorial Day weekend, 2012. I, I, I think it was more because I actually talked to a couple lawyers because my initial lawyer, you know, as I said, I, I, he didn't seem like he wanted to go to trial. He was just like, well, why don't you just plead out? And I'm like, no. So, um, mm-hmm. you know, I don't remember what he said, but I, he definitely didn't say, well, we can definitely win this. I think it was more, well, you know, you may have a case here. You could win. or, or you, Look, you know, kid, um, uh, you want to take this to trial? <laughs> I'll take it to trial. That yeah, kind of they thing. Say that. You know, if I, if my so, attorney's not excited about something, I don't want him to take the case. I don't want to pay an attorney who's not excited about a case who doesn't think. I mean, I don't generally want to pay an attorney well, at all. The vast but, majority yeah, right. of them just they're, they're just uh, agents to turn in your plea bargain. So, looking back on this, what would you do differently if this happened again? You know, what, in this case, being that. It's such a minor thing. I don't know that I would have hired an attorney, period, and I would have just done some research on my own. And if I did, I would have went out of state. Um, the worst case, uh, yeah. w- w- before you go on. I'm not, worst... sorry, not out of state, out of uh, Las Vegas and went, you know, I got see. a lawyer that doesn't work with all these judges and mm-hmm. these, uh, you know, is not friends with all these people. So in the in the worst case scenario, if you hadn't hired an attorney, remember because you did have an attorney, the whole process was seventy four hundred dollars. I mean, from from finish beginning to finish, and if you hadn't hired an attorney, you did point out you could have taken a plea deal and paid six hundred dollars, or you could have not taken the plea and just gone to trial yourself and likely have paid, like you said, the final fine was a thousand something plus whatever filing fees you'd have had to have paid yeah. to the courts. Probably would have clocked in at around two grand. Uh, instead of seventy four hundred dollars, so I mean, I just feel like I understand court is scary. I get it, but if you're willing to face the consequences, and you you're gonna have to face them, whether or not you have an attorney, uh, you know, is not gonna matter in a lot of cases. If you're willing to face down the consequences, and you can't find an attorney who's like jazzed about your case, take it on your own and give it your best shot. This I wish is not you, legal advice. Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> Thanks for the call tonight, Dave. I wish you the best out there. The toll free number is eight fifty five four fifty free. It's certainly not advice attorneys want to, want given out. I mean, they don't want you to anybody to say, don't get an attorney. They don't want you to go this alone because they want to hold your hand, like Mark suggested, in a lot of cases through a plea deal or yeah. in this case through the entire process, which ultimately was a loss. Policies issued by American General Life Insurance Company, Houston, Texas. Not available in all states. For details, visit AIGdirect.com. It takes a lot of courage to face your own death, but I'm glad I finally did. See, I was putting off getting life insurance to protect my family, even though I knew it was important. Then my neighbor's husband died. I watched her struggle emotionally and financially. It really made me face reality. If my husband died, how would I pay the mortgage, the car payments, or keep up the life the kids and I had? I realized I needed to get us life insurance right away. So I called AIG Direct. In less than five minutes, I had a quote. I was shocked at how affordable it is. Just $14 a month for $250,000 of term life coverage. I feel so much better knowing my family has protection. Call AIG Direct right now for a free no-obligation quote. The call takes less than five minutes, and you can save up to 70%. Call now, 1-800-463-7479. That's 1-800-463-7479. 1-800-463-7479. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. 
I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on joined the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. Find out about giving to our Google AdWords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp.freetalklive.com. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. Are you looking for an excuse to come check out New Hampshire this fall? You're invited to Keenvention. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. You can explore the beautiful little city of Keene, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, do some Robin Hooding, and learn about making the move. Keenvention received rave reviews last year. If you missed it, visit keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel. This year, Rich Paul is our first announced keynote speaker, and more are being announced now at keenvention.info. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keene for Keenvention this October 31st through November 2nd. You can pre-order your tickets now for just $60 at Keenvention.info, or you can pay with Bitcoin. Visit Keenvention.info for more information and to lock in your tickets at the pre-order $60 price for the whole weekend. Visit Keenvention.info for more, or look for our page and event on Facebook. That's Keenvention.info. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up whatever you want. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Coming up, the latest on the Silk Road. Uh, Breaking news yesterday. Didn't have a chance to really get into it. Uh, But uh, we'll get to that, and freekeen.com is the source for that news about one of the administrators or one of the alleged administrators of the infamous underground black market. We're going to continue with your calls and thoughts first, though, and maybe you want to share with us your story of how you got hosed by an attorney. I'm sure there's no shortage of stories like that when you've hired an attorney and it didn't quite turn out the way you expected. Well, I mean, the fact is these capitals, Washington, D.C., and every state capital, these places are um, maybe maybe not New Hampshire, but still, most of these places are lawyer industrial complexes. Mm -hmm. They churn out laws that uh, that require the average individual to get an attorney. They're lawyers creating laws that require people to hire lawyers. What a surprise. Yep, so we'll get to that, uh, and we'll continue with your calls and thoughts here, but I also want to let you know about ProXPN. It is a global virtual private network, and they encrypt your data online, meaning that before whatever you're doing reaches your internet service provider, it's been encrypted, so your ISP can no longer keep records about where you're going and what you're doing online. In some cases, they're keeping those records for up to five years, so that makes it easy for government agencies to get a hold of your information. It also makes it easy for your cable company or your ISP to sell uh, your information information to people as well so keep that in mind you can stop that from happening by getting pro xpn go to proxpn.com slash ftl download their free app for windows macintosh ios devices as well as android devices linux users 
Setup's a little bit different for you, but it's possible, and it's actually pretty easy. Go to proxpn.com slash FTL. Get started there and use promo code FTL50. Uh, that'll get you 50% off the price of their annual account, which brings the price down to about $5 a month. For great privacy protection, proxpn.com slash FTL. Again, code FTL50. And that, by the way, that savings is good for the lifetime of the account. Perhaps you'd prefer to pay with Bitcoin. Well, you'll get an even better deal with this code, FTLBTC, like Bitcoin. Uh, you get 62% off the price of the annual account with uh, that paid when you pay in Bitcoin. And you get unlimited bandwidth with a premium account. Servers around the world you can connect to. You can privately torrent. That alone is worth the 5 bucks a month. Uh, you can get past regionally blocked websites and more. Go to proxpn.com slash FTL. Again, codes are FTL50 for people paying with the old credit card system. And then FTLBTC for those of you with Bitcoin. We'll continue with your calls. And let's go to, I believe we've got Uber George on the line. George, you're on Free Talk Live. Where are you calling from tonight? I'm calling from Northern Virginia again. Right. Um, I wanted to talk about that Wired um, magazine article about overpopulation that you talked about the other night. Yeah, quite a bit I last wanted... night we discussed that idea. Go ahead. Yeah, I just wanted to offer a different explanation for why a lot of people say that the Earth is overcrowded. Basically, they don't, if that's that um, there's not enough room, we, we can always build up this planet land, and it's, it's not that we got, we don't have any food because we throw away a lot of food anyway. Mm -hmm. It's because uh, it's the whole global warming thing. Uh, the more people you got on the planet, the more people will use – there will be more people that use stuff that pollute, like cars, like you know, electronic houses and stuff like that. And that's the reason why so many people you know, are saying – Hey, there's too many people on the planet right there. And I'm, I'm not I'm not the one here saying that, you know, we need a government program. I think Mark already came up with the solution last night anyway. But, yeah, it's like, um, I think that's the real reason right there that um, a lot of people say there's too many people on the planet. It's because, you know, from the whole global warming standpoint. Okay, so there are some people who think that uh, people are, are making the planet hot. And so for this reason, they, they think that there are too many people. And that's really scary when, when governments start doing that. Like, we're going to tax you to change the weather, and we're going to have fewer <laughs> human beings because there's just way too many of you things here. <laughs> but, the, but the thing of it is that the countries like you know America and Europe, and Europe we're not the problem on that. Our population growth is like we're barely at, you know, sustaining our population now. We only, uh, America only, you know, has a population growth thanks to immigration. You take that away, hmm. and we're at zero population growth now. Interesting. It's, it's a lot of times the third world countries that that are still, you know, popping out humans like um, like in the assembly line practically. <laughs> right, <laughs> but there's a but there's still a but there's still a war on women if we don't give away free birth control. <laughs> <laughs> no, right. So, George, um, I mean, so how do you feel about this? I realize you're kind of going through some uh, some positions here. How do you feel about the issue of overpopulation? Well, I'm, I'm kind of ambivalent on it, but the way I see it, you know, I've already done my part in that deciding just not having kids like that. You know, I can kind of understand there you go. where they're What more from. can you ask? Right? You know, hey, you're <laughs> not going to have kids. I've got a vasectomy. I'm not going to have kids either. So You, know, you are so good for the earth and mother guy that you in. You know, you did your part. <laughs> <laughs> now, now you can... Because right there, it, that's a, according to some environmentalists, getting that vasectomy does um, far more better for the earth that it more than makes up for our There you go. Uh, where's my check? Thanks for the call tonight. Yeah. I appreciate hearing from you. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. So if it's fossil fuels that release carbon and fossil fuels are limited because they're made of fossils, then there shouldn't be a problem if more people use up the fossil fuels that exist – because, I mean, you either have the choice of using them up quickly and creating the heat, because the same BTUs are going to be expended over time, right? So if you expend five uh, BTUs per hour for 10 hours, you've expended the same amount of BTUs as if you expend 10 BTUs per hour for five hours, right? It's, it's not the BTUs of the of the burning of the carbon fuel. The problem is the, the release of the carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, which traps in the the uh, the rays of the sun. If it is uh, the theory behind global warming anyway, and I don't buy it, I think it's complete nonsense. But the the theory would be that when you're, you're creating these, uh, the, the 
you're releasing the carbon into the atmosphere. It's like trapping uh, energy from the sun inside of the atmosphere. And if you release it sooner, then it would, in fact, have an exponential effect that you're trapping more rays for a longer period of time. So it would be exponential? Yes. Okay. So uh, I, what does it mean when you when you talk about exponential when it comes to the temperature? I mean, what is the proposed... A, th a, a thing that is exponential only has to be growing at a rate, at a percentage rate, mm -hmm. right? And any any exponential chart over time will look like a hockey stick, right? So if you... Start uh, this is kind up, of a right? visual bit and we're a radio show. That's not going to work. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, but it, it will, it will over time, the, the rate stays the same, but the amount of growth increases dramatically, right? Mm -hmm. So if, if, I'm, if I'm growing at a rate of you know if i'm doubling you know every day well then every day that double is double what it was before and it's growing is the very suggestion, rapidly uh, is the suggestion from some of these environmentalist folks that are pushing this agenda that they're expecting the temperatures to double or something like that no or? i'm just using doubling as an easy thing for the right. audience to understand but i mean you know say say that the uh the atmosphere say say the they don't actually have the information. They're saying, though, well, we think 200 years yeah. ago it was this temperature. And I'm like, I'm sorry. I don't trust people who lit their houses with candles to tell like, me. What's what the worst case scenario? I mean, we know that the, back in the 70s, or I think it was the 70s, people were talking about how there was an ice age coming. And now it's, you know, then then it was global warming. Now it's global climate change because it's not necessarily warming, et cetera. So it's like the, the story keeps changing from the folks that are pushing this environmental disaster. But there usually should be some kind of a scarce, you know, scary story. So like... Is it that it's going to get three degrees warmer? I mean, what is the proposed, ooh, look well, out? Well, if, the, if the temperature were to increase on an exponential basis, yeah. then that would mean that, you know, over time, the amount of change is going to increase dramatically, right? So let's just say, let's say, for just as a random example, let's say the temperature, the average temperature was increasing at one degree Fahrenheit each year. Uh -huh. And like, I'm sorry, not one degree Fahrenheit, one percent. Right. Let's yeah. say it's increasing at one percent, and you know that is you know a fraction of a degree one year and a It'll whole degree larger, the next, sure. and you know eventually this becomes a very serious problem, and that's mm -hmm. you know you can understand why that would panic somebody, right? Um, and we don't have exact. Nobody's giving us exact numbers. They're saying, well, generally, blah blah blah, and the hurricanes and stuff, and blaming everything that happens on global warming, and somehow taxes are going to change that problem, or giving away birth control, and you know discouraging somehow, people from breeding, or that somehow man is going to be able to control the climate i find that uh you know maybe at some point that will be the case but it seems pretty unbelievable to me yeah i don't i don't think that uh people in general are capable of controlling it and certainly governments can't centrally plan an economy i don't know how they're going right. to do it to the weather like these well, little that's ants. my biggest concern i sort of believe in uh, global warming to some extent but it if you turn it over to the government, we're all going to die. All right, let's come back with more here. You can share your thoughts. Also, the latest on the Silk Road coming up. Toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. This is Free Talk Live. Crashed. The Death of the Dollar. It's a hot new novel that has a lot of people talking. It explores what our government's reaction to a U.S. currency collapse would be. And when the government nationalizes all supply chains in an effort to keep order, the sentiment voiced towards such a tyranny is, we're not picking the fight. The government already did that. We'll just be fighting back for a change. This is a great book, but don't take my word for it. Look at the reviews on Amazon. Bernie says, Crashed is a really terrifying trip. It is thought-provoking. It makes you wonder, what if? Could this happen? Gary Jones ads this is an excellent book it is also a little scary because it could very well be true i hope it's fiction and julia moffett calls it a gripping read and the most exciting insightful book this year crash is a fast-paced read that has two-thirds of its amazon reviewers calling for a sequel this book is totally worth your time. It's well-researched, liberty-oriented, realistic, gripping, and gritty. Do yourself a favor and don't miss this one. Get your copy at amazon crashed the death of the dollar by william cooper I didn't believe it. Neither did I. No way could you professionally remove unwanted hair, pain-free, and at home. My thoughts exactly. Remove my face and body hair without expensive, painful office visits. Not possible. Great minds think alike. Until I tried No-No Pro. Mm-hmm. Wait, you tried No-No? Yes, and it works. I use it on my face, legs, bikini line. We're BFFs, and you didn't tell me about No-No? Here, this is my new No-No Pro. The most powerful No-No made. Custom treatment levels, less hair in less time, perfect for any skin type. Try it. No hair, no pain, no time consuming expensive office visits no no and no no for a limited time you can try no no pro risk-free you'll also get the facial kit and a travel case get weeks of long-lasting results that's it i'm getting a no no great minds do think alike <laughs> <laughs> try no no pro risk-free by calling 800-952-5760 
800-952-5760. That's 800-952-5760. 800-952-5760. A hot new murder craze sweeps Chicago. Things that shouldn't be said in modern society are said 1,400 times at the RNC, and a brave woman enters a restaurant without first looking it up online. This is the Onion Week in Review. The World Wildlife Fund quickly backtracked Thursday from a recently released press statement saying panda ears are, quote, absolutely delicious. Organization officials noted that while panda ears do taste amazing, braised, steamed, fried, or cooked in an omelet, they should not have announced it publicly, nor should they have ever eaten any part of a cheetah, giraffe, or Bengal tiger, no matter how good they may be. According to company sources, the Netflix board of directors held a tense series of meetings earlier this morning to decide whether the fantasy comedy Michael is streamworthy. The board reportedly sat through its mandatory two back-to-back -back screenings of the 1996 film starring John Travolta as an angel visiting Earth, all while passionately arguing over the film's story, acting, and level of enjoyment upon subsequent viewings to determine if the movie should be available through its instant viewing program. This is the Onion News Network. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges. This is Davi Barker from shinybadges.com, and I just want to personally apologize for airing a jingle week after week, month after month, that turned out to be such an infectious brain worm. So to make it up to you, I'm offering a free gift. The next time you make a purchase at shinybadges.com, write worms in the transaction comments, and I'll send you something weird. Help get LRN.FM into more ears. Visit promote.lrn.fm for a free bumper sticker, flyers, banners, graphics, and more. Promote.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. We'll take your calls. You dial in toll free. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You can join us online. Go to freetalklive.com. Enjoy the features. If you like the show and you want to help support Free Talk Live, then please, you can become an amplifier at amp.freetalklive.com. It's five bucks a month. We invest that money into the show, getting on more radio stations around the country. Go to amp.freetalklive.com and get perks like access to the Amp Only call-in lines, Amp Only podcast, Amp Only Facebook group, and more. Uh, once again, that's amp.freetalklive.com. Go get a free pound of coffee at coffee.freetalklive.com. When you, uh, you know, sign up for the subscription there, you continue to get your coffee from coffee.freetalklive.com. You'll be helping us help people around the world because for every 10 people that sign up to get their coffee there, delicious coffee, 100% organic top 1% great Arabica beans, shade grown, then for every 10 people, we'll be able to give another micro loan to another family to help them out. People in need, coffee.freetalklive.com. All right, let's uh, continue with your calls and thoughts coming up the latest on the Silk Road underground drug market. What's happened to one of the alleged, or who one of the alleged administrators is? And we're not talking about Ross Ulbricht this time. Let's go first, though, to Dave. He's in Poughkeepsie, New York. Dave, you're on Free Talk Live with Ian, Chris, and Mark. Hello, Dave. Uh, I'm kind of a little uh, upset with you guys. Uh, last night, you guys uh, made fun of me. After when you guys hung up with me after last night, you guys made fun of me, and you I want to know why. Last night? Yes, I did. I don't recall that, but okay. Do you recall that, Mark? You I called. Call la Mark I says call, he I called last night. I, I called last night saying, "Oh, I had a job uh, doing telemarketing. It starts next week." And right okay. after, I, right, right after you got, right after you guys had hung up with me, you guys started to make fun of me. I don't appreciate what that. What did we say to make fun of you? Know, yeah, can you repeat you the jokes? Know. I I wasn't here, and I want in on this right now. You guys know full well that I have Asperger's and I'm bipolar. Now, and you guys went and said, oh, I get money from the city. Or, you, you, you guys nope, totally nope. made fun of me. I didn't say that. Me. Yes, yes, Please? yes, you did. Yes, really, you did. Really, I did? I think you should go back and listen. Ian attends to, uh, to to do this sort of thing, not I. I said that I had heard you were living in uh, some sort of welfare housing. Is that not true? 
It's not. It is not welfare housing. What is it? I'm not going to tell you what it is because it's really none of your business. Isn't it like, like some sort of home for abused women or something like that? No, it's, <laughs> no, it's not. No, it's not. No, it is not. And see, see there, there you go again. You're laughing. You are, you guys, I'm that, laughing. That, that's, that's uh, my name is Chris. Oh, I'm there, laughing you at you. Time. Chris you can't well. You guys are making fun of me. Yes, yes. Look, I, I don't know exactly what happened last night, but I'm a big fan of making fun of people, Dave. And and it sounds Why? to me Why? because it's Why? enjoyable, because I, I enjoy no, laughing about, at other people's expense. Bernard, what if somebody makes fun of you? So oh, people make fun of Ian with Chris. all the time. First of all, you were talking with Chris Cantwell, not Ian. I'm yeah, over here. I make, I make fun of Ian, right? You know, and I'm friends with Ian, right? And uh, I and I should do more of it, frankly. And and, <laughs> and Ian has, uh, you know, talked about me and, and laughed about me. And this is, you know, this is good, wholesome entertainment for the whole family. Uh, and, oh, and, oh, oh, and, so, so, you, so you're saying that it's entertainment to make fun of people. Yeah. That is completely wrong. Have you so ever listened to not, Opie and Anthony? How, how, no, I don't Howard Stern, I any comedian ever? Stern. Have you ever been to any comedy show in the history of laughing? Yeah, I mean, you know, Howard no, Stern haven't. hired Stuttering John, mm. and I suspect I he did it. I could care less about Howard well, Stern. I could care less about Stuttering John. That's uh, not true, Maybe Dave. you're kind of like our Stuttering John. Yeah, you're like a character on the show. You call in here all the time, right? Yeah. So like you're like part of the show now, okay? So you you call into the show pretty regular basis, right? I've I've only been on the show for what three or four weeks now, mm -hmm. and like I'm already familiar with Dave from Poughkeepsie, right? And and I'm sure the listeners know who you are, which is why they're te Ian, they're telling Ian stuff about you, right? So I mean, you're like you're like a public figure now, and now you get made fun of, and that's how it works. You should see my YouTube comments, the nasty, terrible things that people say about me, and that's what I open myself up. to. To by putting myself out well, why there. Why do you do it? Why, why do you why do you make fun of people? Why? For the same reason other people make fun of people because it's fun. It's called making fun. No, <laughs> We're making fun, right? Now this is actually something with how, which how I disagree fun? with Chris. Um, how, how, how is it fun to make somebody make make fun of somebody who is Asperger's or bipolar or, or let's say they're a slow learner or that kind of stuff? How is how is that fun making fun of somebody else? I, I think that it's fun because they're easy targets, but frankly, right? So like when you're making fun oh, of so, someone oh, oh, wait, who wait, has wait, a problem. Wait, wait. So you're saying because it's, because somebody said it's an e because you just said it's an easy target to yes. go and make fun of poke somebody because they have, they have, they have some, they, because they have some kind of disability that you think that that is fun because because it's an easy target for you. Yes, that's that exactly totally the words that, that just came Dave, out of my mouth. Let me ask you this. Is it okay that to make totally fun of messed up. Dave? Is it okay to make fun of somebody who doesn't have any problems at all? Come again? Is it okay to make fun of somebody who doesn't have any problems at all? No, it's not. Okay, so at no point can you make can you tell jokes that aren't puns, right? Like all jokes, uh, most jokes have some are at the expense of someone, right? A lot of them and, are. Yeah. And most, I'm just saying most. Yeah. Many jokes are at the expense of someone. I'm not defending this. I'm just asking questions, and I think people need to ask themselves this question because it's really sort of difficult. Do you want to suck the joy out of life by saying, nope, can't make fun of anybody, can't make fun of people you agree with, can't make fun of people you disagree with, you can't make fun of anybody, somebody might not like it. It doesn't really matter whether they are uh, you know, they have some diagnosed why, condition Why would you want to go around making fun of people? Why? Why would you I want didn't to go ask you that question. I said, do you want to make it so that no one can make fun of anyone anymore? Correct, yes. Well, <laughs> that, that, that life is going to suck. All right, Dave, hang because on a second, man. Dave, hang on. I want to actually agree uh, with, with Dave on this. I don't think it's a good practice to make fun of people who have problems they can't help. You know, it's... It's we pretty all have low problems. to go around and make fun of crippled people. I mean, that's pretty low. Now, Chris, you may stoop that low. I'm, I'm laughing at it just thinking right. about it, like I making mean, fun of crippled people just sounds like so much fun. Let me ask you, let me ask you, let's say somebody was in a wheelchair, would you make fun of them? <laughs> yes. Only if it's funny. I would. <laughs> Why? 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 I answer, for the same reason I answered you before. It's called making fun. We're creating fun, <laughs> oh, oh, Dave. So, so, this so is the thing with Dave. Wheelchair, you would, so if somebody was, in a, somebody was in a wheelchair, you would make fun of them. Yeah, exactly. I'll make fun of people. I'll Why? make fun of people because of race and gender and sexuality and wheelchairs Chris, oh, and true. haircuts. I don't care. He I'm is, here to have fun. I'm enjoying myself and ent entertaining an audience. It's what we're here to do. Chris is definitely an equal oh, opportunity oh, oh, so offender. You, you, There's you no doubt. Because you... 
you you said you make it because oh, oh I'm gonna make fun of somebody because or because it sounds to me that you are a racist. Uh, oh. oh, so let's just throw <laughs> let's just throw that epithet out All there. Right. Hang on, Dave. I'm gonna put you on hold here for just a moment. I I just uh, want to come back down to what what I was saying a moment ago, and that is that you know I I feel some level of uh, difficulty with this particular issue. I mean, I like a good joke. There's no doubt about it. And I you know there was a game that I remember playing back in the '90s on the on BBSs, which were kind of the predecessor to the internet yeah they had these things they called door games you could go in and play them where it was basically like a text game where they tell you you know there's this bad guy on the screen and you have to attack them and things like that legend of the uh, red dragon trade wars one. yeah um but one of them was called cripple smash <laughs> <laughs> see it's funny it is funny i mean the game is horrible i mean the whole purpose of the game is that instead of dragons and you know these elves and things like that you're attacking people with cripples and you know no, leprosy people don't have cripples well people who are crippled okay <laughs> and it's like a horrible I, you know i wouldn't it's mind a, owning some cripples slow. it's a horrible game but it's also horribly funny and i mean so i'm you know torn with that but i that, don't i don't, you know i'm not you chris i don't do this i don't make go out of my way to make fun of people but you're at the not same even time, funny but at the same time when you know when you have a relationship i think when you have a relationship with somebody especially males seem to do this a lot yeah. uh there's there's that sort of give and take that uh, that goes on i try to stay away from making fun of other people and in the case of dave we were just talking about what i was just talking about what i believed about him i thought i had heard that he was living in some sort of a welfare based or government paid for uh housing complex he's being very reticent with telling us the truth You're about right. the housing complex in which he lives and there are some things that are just you know observable obviously about you dave you do have a tendency to repeat yourself and while it sometimes it can be uh, annoying it can also be kind of funny so uh, and some of your videos are very very funny whether you intentionally were being funny or not on your YouTube channel, and, Hudson and, Valley and see, Guy there, 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 there you go again. You, you, you put me on hold so that I, I couldn't respond to any, any, of, your, uh, any of your questions. Well, that's or because we've had you, you on, on for the majority of the segment, and you just keep, you know, we, we, we're, it, was, it was tough to have a full conversation to get a full statement out. So go ahead. Now you have a chance to respond. And, and you said, oh, I live in some kind of a, you know, government, whatever, blah, blah, this, blah, blah. You know nothing about where I live. And it's really none of your business where I live, okay? Because it's, it's none of your concern. Well, I've I watched your YouTube you videos know. where there are, uh, where you're at your house showing video footage out your window of people throwing things on the street from the apartment above you. I mean, it's, it's public knowledge, sort of, where yeah, you, you live. Yeah, you let people know. Plus, you called in specifically. I don't know when you called in, but it was a couple of days ago. You called in asking us questions about whether or not you should get a certain job. And your your current financial status is an important aspect of that question. If you've got $10 million and you want to, to know whether I think you should get an $8 an hour job, the answer is no, you shouldn't. If you have nothing and you're living in some kind of welfare housing, the answer is yes, you should right away. All right, Dave, thanks for the call tonight. There you go. 855-450-FREE. That's the toll-free number here. It's Free Talk Live. The Lumber Liquidators Fall Flooring Kickoff Sale is on with over 250 of the latest styles all on sale now. Get Black Forest Oak Laminate for a crazy 39 cents a square foot. Beautiful and durable bamboo for just $159. Classic pre-finished gunstock oak hardwood for $149. All gorgeous Bella Wood pre-finished hardwood is on sale. Plus get special 24-month financing. Go to LumberLiquidators.com today to find the store nearest you. Hurry, this sale ends Tuesday the 2nd. The fall flooring season is here. Why aren't you? Hi. This is Michael Dean from the Freedom Fiends Radio Show. The internet has lowered the cost barrier for a worldwide radio show to a price approaching zero. Yet there is one arena where you still need thousands of dollars to approach the audio quality of the corporate media. Doing a live spoken show with more than one host in different geographic locations. Our program, Fiend Phone, will solve that problem and it will be given away free. Go to fiendphone.com to see what you can do to help. That's F E E N P H O N E.com. Stop harming your body with coffee from grocery stores or most chains. Start making a difference one cup at a time. We've partnered with Kamano Island Coffee Roasters to offer you a free pound of BuzzBox coffee. It's organic, so no harmful pesticides or toxins. Shade grown, meaning less acidity and no heartburn. Try the best of the best for free. Just cover shipping. 10% of future purchases go toward helping us give the gift of human freedom around the globe with at least 100 microloans via World Vision. Go to coffee.freetalklive.com. 
The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Wednesday, August 20th, 2014. Silver is trading at $19.51 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,296 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $480. Antiwar.com reports, the surge of fighters into Iraq has the ISIS recruitment effort picking up dramatic pace, with the Syrian Observatory for Human Rights reporting they signed up 6,300 new fighters in July alone. That's a huge addition and also a shift in the overall makeup of ISIS, as some 5,000 of the new recruits were believed to be Syrians. ISIS is overwhelmingly made up of foreign fighters. The influx of Syrian recruits finally gives ISIS a meaningful membership, which is local to their new caliphate as opposed to simply foreign invaders who are carving out a religious state and territory they ousted Syria and Iraq from. The recruitment surge is likely not a one-off deal either, with the group picking up its efforts even more this month following the U.S. launching of an air war in Iraq. The U.S. war is expected to have a big impact on recruitment of Westerners as well as locals still angry at the last U.S. occupation. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Roberts and Roberts Brokerage. For over 35 years, Roberts and Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment grade precious metals. They now take Bitcoin for purchasing precious metals so you can turn your profits into a long-term investment. Call Roberts and Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing. 800-874-9760. CNN reports, Texas Governor Rick Perry was booked on Tuesday on two felony charges related to his handling of a local political controversy. The Texas governor voluntarily appeared at the Travis County Court to be fingerprinted and have his mugshots taken. He told reporters, I'm going to enter this courthouse with my head held high knowing that the actions I took were not only lawful and legal, but right. Adding, I'm going to fight this injustice with every fiber of my being and we will prevail and will prevail because we're standing on the rule of law. The charge alleges that the governor misused his office by improperly threatening to and then withholding state funds for a program run by a county prosecutor unless she resigned. Rick Perry was indicted last week on counts alleging coercion of a public servant and abuse of his official capacity. His initial court appearance is scheduled for this Friday. The case centers around a veto in June 2013 of 7.5 five million dollars approved by the legislature to fund a public integrity unit run by travis county district attorney rosemary limberg he wanted her out following a drunk driving arrest and she refused to leave his legal team insists he had a legal right to tie funding for the public integrity unit to limberg's removal and argues he had no legal obligation to explain his veto he said on tuesday that he would do the same thing again if faced with the same situation In the spirit of Motorhome Diaries and Liberty on Tour, I intend to take the message of peace, love, and liberty on the road. During a 104-day trip, I'll be visiting at least 10 cities across the country, speaking to people about the ideas of peace, love, and liberty. To find out more about the tour or to donate, visit GoFundMe.com slash FPPCC. That's GoFundMe.com slash FPPCC. Antiwar.com reports, gun battles broke out in the center of the eastern Ukrainian city of Donetsk yesterday as military forces, backed with artillery fire, attacked rebel positions in the capital of the rebel-held region. 
There were reports of fights as well as car chases at several points in the capital throughout the day, and civilians fled their homes amid the intense shelling by Ukrainian forces. The Ukrainian military has promised to crush the rebellion in what it is calling an anti-terrorist operation and seems to be nearing victory, surrounding the last few rebel strongholds and shelling the areas for days before finally pushing in. Ukrainian officials are planning a meeting with Russian officials next week in Minsk, and Russia is expected to push heavily for an end to the civil war and a negotiation settlement with the mostly ethnic Russian rebels. Russia has been pushing for a settlement for months now, complaining of the growing humanitarian crisis, which has displaced over a million civilians, many of them fleeing into Russia to escape the offensive. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. It's The Onion Radio News. Hager physicists have created quantum slacks. This is Doyle Redland reporting. The stunning announcement that a team of Hager physicists has successfully developed quantum slacks was made this morning at a press conference in Philadelphia. According to Dr. Daniel Chang, head of the Hager team, conventional notions about the physical properties and possibilities of slacks have been turned on their heads. We are on the verge of unzipping the secrets of creation and peering into the pants of God himself. It appears the very fabric of the universe may well be a smart cotton twill weave. However, Chang urged caution in further research. After tests conducted last month at the Hager Pants Propulsion Collider Laboratory in Dallas suggested the possible existence of so-called anti-pants, which could, in theory, initiate a chain reaction resulting in no pants at all. Doyle Redland for The Onion Radio News, online at theonion.com. This is The Onion News Network. Free Talk Live. You can bring up anything that you want. Just dial on in toll free here to 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Coming up the latest on the Silk Road, the underground marketplace. I had wondered aloud on the air a few weeks back now, wondered aloud what was going on in the other guy's cases. So we know a lot about Ross Ulbricht. He's the guy who's accused of being the main operator of the Silk Road, but they arrested three other guys in December of 2013, and their cases just haven't gotten the same level of coverage that Ross has, even though they're facing very similar charges. So we've got an update, actually, on all three of those guys uh, coming up here in a little bit. Our toll-free number is, again, 855-450-FREE. And with you tonight in the studio, you've got Ian here. Cantwell. And Mark. We go to the phones. Your calls and thoughts welcome. Billy, listening in southern Utah to LRN.FM. Hey, Billy. Hey, how you doing? Hey, what's on your mind tonight? Uh, I just wanted to respond to Dave, who I believe that was his name, that called and was so angry about uh, getting made fun of. This is always why Dave in New York calls the show. He's been uh, being made fun of for years. Uh, He's gone to different – just give you a little – before you respond, just give you a little background on who Dave is. Uh, he's he's called this show for uh, what like close to a year now. It seems like it's been more a while than that. since we've had him on. Um, and prior to this, he had uh, encountered a number of people in his Poughkeepsie area on various different sort of forums on the internet that are area related, if you will, like Craigslist. I guess you can talk on there. Apparently, uh, there's some other forum. You know, a couple different forums. Anyway, p- people have been hounding him for years and calling him names and and making fun of him and he's very upset and has been about it for quite a long time anyway go ahead with your response well i mean i became disabled at age 18 in the navy and i'm I'm 35 now exactly you know you gotta laugh about it you gotta you gotta be if you can't laugh and make fun of it and have some fun with it then all you can do is be upset and be unhappy absolutely you know I mean, really, this is, I mean, I went from being a high school athlete to being disabled. I thought I'd do a career in the Navy. Now I'm a little podunk farmer. Uh, you know, you got to have some fun with it. You got to lighten up uh, because uh, otherwise you're just going to be miserable. Exactly. And I, and I think uh, that when you when when you can make light of something, I mean, you really you take the power away from it. Right. I mean, sure. you, know, you know, if there's if there's exactly. a stigma, if, you, there, if there's a stigma attached to something and you can make a joke about it and people can laugh about it, all of a sudden this is not something that we all have to commiserate about. And I, and I think that this is lost on a lot of things. I mean, you, it, it, this happens. This runs rampant in the comedy industry. We talked not so long ago about 
Anthony Cumia getting fired from Sirius XM over over like racial comments on Twitter. I mean, like race is this huge divisive issue in the country, and and I think that when somebody can make a joke out of something and then audience laughs about it, even if they feel a little guilty about the laugh, it's almost better that way. It, it takes it takes the power out of it, and it's and not that it not to diminish you know what what you went through. I'm really sorry that you know this. Uh, I'm not sorry. I don't know you, but I'm just saying like you I can I'm, empathize. I'm I mean, it's unfortunate. It. I mean, it's unfortunate that you're in this position, obviously. But yeah, when we if we can make light of things, this makes it easier to deal with. I would think. Yeah, it does. It makes it a lot. I mean, I've been in a wheel. I spent 18 months straight in a wheelchair, and I've been in uh, in and out of wheelchairs off and on, you know, sporadically. I have to keep crutches with me, you know, in case I fall or things like that. That's just been part of my life, my entire adult life. You know, if you can't make light of it, if you can't just be like, well, hey, this is the hand I've been dealt, and go on with it. And get, if you're going to get all upset, your life's just going to be more miserable than it needs to be. Tell us your best cripple joke. You're doing yeah. yourself. What tells your best cripple joke? Um, well, I was in uh, an auto parts store not long ago. I can't say I have a best cripple joke, but I mean, the guy, you know, was looking at me funny. I was buying an in tank fuel pump for a car, you know, and I'm on crutches. And this guy's like, well, how are you going to do this? You know, how can, how can you replace this? Because it's under the car. you got to pull the fuel tank out. Mm-hmm. And, I, you know, my response was, you know, well, anybody can fall. All I got to do is get on the ground, and then I can get the tank out. <laughs> anybody can fall. You know. I can handle this falling it. thing. <laughs> yeah, the falling thing, you know, it's so what? Yeah, it, you think you I have ground ground trouble getting and, on hey, the ground? <laughs> um, yeah, the getting back up, that can be a lot more challenging yeah. at times. Right. Then you just you get know, a spot or some fun know. with it. Hey, Billy, thanks for calling having yeah. a good sense of humor about uh, the issue that you face, and I appreciate your call and the thoughts tonight. You know, somebody like Dave in New York would not be uh, someone who could handle the Colbert Report coming and doing a report on him. I mean, the Colbert Report, you were here for this, Chris. Yeah. It was actually right after you moved. Did they ever uh, air that? Keen. No, it hasn't aired yet. So it's probably one of those things they're still working on. I know they said they were taking like a month off pretty much immediately after shooting that. So they said it could be like another month at least before it goes through post-production and gets on the air. But anyway, Colbert Report came to Keene, New Hampshire to do a report on the Robin Hooding slash chalking thing. Actually, they were originally coming here because of the Robin Hooding thing. And then when they got here, I informed them about what was going on with the ridiculous chalking war that was going on here in Keene at that time. I don't know what its current status is. I haven't heard much about the, uh, the war on chalk. But uh, they were, of course, very interested in that as well because it's ridiculous and it's easy to make fun of this stuff. Right. And uh, it's likely that uh, we're going to be made fun of. Chris, you were interviewed for this particular series. Or yeah, this, and they this went package. into some things that had nothing to do with Chalk or Robin Hood on that. And, then <laughs> and, uh, and I was interviewed and, uh, and, you know, they brought silly props for us to play with and make us look even more ridiculous. So right. I fully, you know, I'm expecting to be skewered and I'm hoping they're going to be skewering the city of Keene as well. So it should be a lot of fun once that finally hits. Yeah, it had, it had seemed to me that they had been uh, either reading or in contact with Stop Free Keene. And I uh-huh, imagine yeah. that the Colt Bear Report could do, could do wonders for those people as well because you've got some interesting characters involved in that oh, yeah. crew. <laughs> so I fully expect for all sides to be made fun of and that's part of the fun of doing it. You yeah. Know, I, you know, I, and I said to, what I said, one of the things I said to Dave is like, just go look at like my YouTube comments. Like people call me fat mother effer and you know, all these, look, I get um, uh, sp- Bat upon on the on the internet, you know, all the time. YouTube people, comments are the worst. They they are some of the most insensitive people in the world. I think it's hysterical. Like even to just go read the comments. Like I I air my show live on YouTube before it goes out on the RSS feed and stuff mm-hmm. like that. And like I go and look at that afterwards. And like and it's and it's funny to me because they say nasty things about a comment that you made in real time, and then you go back and you all you see is the nasty comment. Yeah, and you realize you know exactly what they were talking about. Sometimes just, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, it's I I think it's hysterical. And like when people are making making fun of me on the internet, I laugh about it, you know, mm. and it's not, look, I'm not, I don't, I'm not uh, 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 diagnosed with some sort of illness, you know, I'm not. I'm sure you could get diagnosed, though. Mm-hmm. This is the point yeah. I was trying to make today. defiance is, is, disorder. Right, that's what you've got, my friend. I'm um, pretty sure uh, Chris would probably 
I probably fall one. in there too. But I mean, Dave was saying essentially, don't make fun of people who've got problems. Here's a little bit of news flash for you, buddy. Everybody's Everybody got on them. the whole planet's got a problem. Yep. And as soon as you start, <laughs> as soon as you start saying, "Oh well, we can't pick on him for this or this for that," or the, then you're just talking about everybody at that point because everybody's got a problem. I've got big ears. Uh, Cantwell's, uh, you know, pudgy. Ian, you're not funny. <laughs> the big ears was definitely something I dealt with uh, as a kid as well. Uh, so your calls and thoughts are welcome. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. I was the smelly kid in school. Really? really? I was, yeah. That's uh, unfortunate. Uh, I hit, I hit uh, puberty like before the other kids, so and like my armpits, didn't and they about... didn't explain this to me. And Your like... parents didn't explain to you Well, when my parents, when I was leaving the house in the morning, I smelled fine, right? I took a oh, shower, I leave for no. house, and then I go to school, and they're like, they're, they called me burrito boy, and they <laughs> made fun of me. <laughs> You know, all throughout elementary school, and it followed me into junior high, and it was like, no, I figured this out. Stop calling me these names. You know, yeah. now I smell like you know speed stick or whatever I was wearing. You know, and but no, I still had to be burrito boy until I started punching people in the face, and and then people stopped <laughs> making fun of me, and then they started making fun of me for other reasons. So in the past, then uh, you didn't like being made fun of. I did not enjoy it myself. No. When did but- you develop the the, the thick skin for that? I mean, because it, it is something that I think takes some practice. You, you, well, I mean, like I said, I mean, I was the smelly kid in school. You get used to it after mm-hmm. some period of time. And then, <clears throat> you know, and then... Uh, yeah, but you started attacking people over you said, so well, you obviously weren't yes. used to it. Um, that was... The f- my- yeah, uh, that wasn't over like the the smelly kid thing. They they were making fun of oh, me. Okay. They were making fun of me for going down on a girl, if you can believe that, in seventh grade. So they were jealous. Yeah. Uh, more coming up here. Eight fifty five four fifty free. That's eight five five four five zero three seven three three. Coming up, the latest from the Silk Road, the underground drug market. Silk Road's still on, uh, still there, Silk Road 2.0, but the original iteration had been taken down last year by the FBI, and one of the guys they arrested is apparently in the Free State Project. Ban him. We'll tell you more coming up here. (laughs) It's Free Talk Live. Crashed. The Death of the Dollar. It's a hot new novel that has a lot of people talking. It explores what our government's reaction to a U.S. currency collapse would be. And when the government nationalizes all supply chains in an effort to keep order, the sentiment voiced towards such a tyranny is, we're not picking the fight. The government already did that. We'll just be fighting back for a change. This is a great book, but don't take my word for it. Look at the reviews on Amazon. Bernie says, Crashed is a really terrifying trip. It is thought-provoking. It makes you wonder, what if? Could this happen? Gary Jones ads this is an excellent book it is also a little scary because it could very well be true i hope it's fiction and julia moffett calls it a gripping read and the most exciting insightful book this year crashed is a fast-paced read that has two-thirds of its amazon reviewers calling for a sequel this book is totally worth your time it's well researched liberty oriented realistic gripping and gritty do yourself a favor and don't miss this one get your copy at amazon Crashed, The Death of the Dollar by William Cooper. Making the right decisions is a challenge to investors. Are we going to see economic growth, slide into a recession, or at worst, depression? Hi, Ted Anderson from Midas Resources. We all know when a company acts irresponsibly, divesting ourselves in a move towards safety is prudent. When the market becomes volatile, U.S. Treasuries are a safe haven. But what do you do when the U.S. government overextends itself and spends beyond its means? Many investors are turning toward gold as a common-sense alternative to traditional paper investments. Midas Resources has put together a powerful book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, discussing costs, benefits, risks, featuring full-color illustrations, weights, and measures. The book is free and can be yours by calling 800-686-2237. Paper investments are dwarfed by gold's 6,000-year history. Discover how gold may be right for you and your IRA by calling 800-686-2237. Whether buying or it's time for you to sell, the book is free. Call 800 800- Six eight six twenty two thirty seven. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keen. Keen is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keen. 
Keen is the Liberty Media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more, all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at freeross.org. That's freeross.org. This is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at LRN.FM. This is Free Talk Live. We invite you to bring up anything that you want. We're going to talk about the Silk Road here coming up. There's uh, some news about one of the alleged administrators that was arrested back in December. We're going to give you actually an update on all three of the other guys because there was the one guy who was arrested, Ross Ulbricht, as the head of the site, a.k.a. the alleged Dread Pirate Roberts. He's been getting all the news coverage, but we got an update on the other three here in just moments. Yeah, we're going to be heading to Orlando, Florida, October the 4th. 4th and 5th for the Coins to the Kingdom Coins in the Kingdom event. This is a Bitcoin party at the Walt Disney World Resort in Orlando, Florida. A Bitcoin party? Yeah, that's what it's called oh, being wow. called. Yep, Bitcoin Interesting. party. Interesting. A little different from a convention? Yeah, I think that the the age of the Bitcoin convention, I don't know. I mean, maybe we've hmm. maybe maybe we've seen enough of that. Maybe something different is what's in in order. Interesting. So Free Talk Live is going to be there and uh, you're invited. Lots of speakers going to be at the event like uh, Folks from the Cryptocurrency College Network, the Digital Chamber of Commerce, Bitcoin Not Bombs, Sean's Outpost, MIT Bitcoin Project, Bitcoin, uh, the Bitcoin pioneer Charlie Shrim. Now, I don't know if Charlie's going to be able to visit in real life at this event or if he's going to mm, have his little robot. Because he might be on bail conditions, right? I think he's got his little robot, though, that he can uh, kind of roll this around. This is the, the guy who formerly was involved with uh, BitInstant and has been targeted by, was it the feds? Yeah. Yeah. He's, uh, he's being charged with a variety of money laundering related uh, crimes, so-called crimes, conspiracy, etc. Yeah, basically he was told that if he rolled on uh, his hacker friends that he could get out of it all. And he's like, I don't know what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, of course, they've got to nail him to the wall. The It's going to be at the Wyndham Lake Buena Vista in downtown Disney, Saturday, uh, October 4th through Monday, October 6th. Now, Monday, October 6th is a Disney day. Essentially, everybody's going to go out and have fun. Tickets mm. are $60. Hotel rooms are $99. Bucks. Kids, kids under 12 are free. Funds mandatory. Come celebrate the magic internet money at the Magic Kingdom. It's coinsinthekingdom.com. Awesome. That's coinsinthekingdom.com. When's gonna Disney World going to start taking Bitcoin? Uh, I'm sure someone will be talking to them. I imagine they will be. <laughs> uh, so I'm excited about that, and uh, we'll tell you more about it as time goes on. Our toll free in the yeah, Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. So an update for you. This from allthingsvice.com. Not to be confused with vice.com, which is a fine news reporting and opinion site. This is allthingsvice.com. They call themselves your intelligent guide to the seedier side. Headline is accused Silk Road staff. Where are they now? I had literally asked this question aloud on the radio. We were talking about the Silk Road, the, kind of the latest in Ross Ulbricht's case with some of the motions that have been and are being filed in his case. He's the guy who's accused of operating the Silk Road, which is an underground sort of black market for the internet. There are some legal things that are sold through the Silk Road, but for the most part, it's known for the sales of illegal drugs. And uh, was busted last year. Ross Ulbricht was the first arrest. But then later on in the year, they arrested Ross in October. Later on in the year, the other guys were arrested, the other three main administrators of the original Silk Road. 
Uh, one guy is uh, Peter Nash. He was known by a few different names on the site, and uh, one of them was SSBD. According to the indictment, he was the lowest ranked of the three pseudonyms, having only a role in the Silk Road discussion forums and not on the marketplace. That's right. They're charging this guy criminally for helping moderate a forum. You've got to be kidding me. Talk about the, one of what should be the most protected of free speech activities. Uh, they're saying this guy somehow was involved in criminal conspiracy to commit hacking, money laundering, and uh, How is that hacking? drug dealing. Well, well, they can call anything they want on a computer hacking, essentially. So I don't want to say for sure what uh, what they mean by it, but I think that what they're talking about is that because the Silk Road allowed for hacking-related sales of products, that okay. therefore they were involved in the conspiracy they to commit hacking. They are involved in a conspiracy to do all of these so, things that other people did through their medium that they you know facilitated. The correct. Theory. I got it. Correct. So you could like you know you could buy uh, hacking programs of some sort through the Silk Road, which is crap, by the way. Probably a terrible script idea. Script kitty, stupid yeah. things, and some people were dumb enough to part with some Bitcoin in order to get them. Yeah, they're there. Um, and of course, again, it's drugs that are the majority of uh, of the Silk Road. The last time I looked at it, it's too uh, bad they shut down the Armory. That well, the, the Armory was what, Chris? They, they, the, uh, you could buy weapons uh, on the Silk Road that you could buy machine guns. It was a separate like site. Uh, the they armory. create, they made it a separate site. Like uh-huh. at one point, there, there was the Armory was a section of Silk Road, and then they like split it off because there was some, you know, disagreement with making weapons available because right. you know left wingers like drugs too, but they don't want their weapons, <laughs> you know, infecting their drug sales. So uh, with the with the uh, on the Armory site, I did go to check that out before they shut it down, and it was pretty pathetic there was only like a grenade and some kind of gun that was oh, for sale there was all there was was a grenade you know it I mean, wasn't a very uh, large selection at all yeah i mean it's i imagine it's like the shipping a lot the shipping harder has to, ship. to be a lot more difficult i mean you they can, have to ship it in parts in a lot of cases from what i understand right and these things show up in x-ray machines and stuff like that and you know if you uh these things are easy to get uh to get caught with and i imagine i my understanding was it was more than that it was there wasn't much demand for it like people who were just sketchy about trying to do it and they didn't want to uh part with their bitcoin over it because they were afraid of them getting seized there wasn't yeah. a great deal of demand uh was the uh what i'm told is why the the uh, armory got shut down well i mean if you're you're spending 50 bucks on some weed or whatever from silk road you don't feel like you're going to lose as much as if you're going to drop the risk is lower than a right. $900 gun or something right a $900 gun what about a you know a $5000 sure. uh you know rocket propelled grenade sniper rifles right. you sure, know yeah. these kind of things so i don't know what the the rates would be but I would be a lot more reticent. First off, I just don't want that stuff. <laughs> but um, I'd be a lot more reticent to play that game. So, again, this guy, just one of the forum administrators, the lowest ranked of the three that were arrested in December. He was arrested in Australia. The United States has requested his extradition uh, or had requested his extradition upon his arrest under Australian law unless the subject of an extradition request can show special circumstances. The person must be remanded in custody. Consequently, Mr. Nash was remanded in a Brisbane jail where he was placed in protective custody. A local newspaper revealed that he had worked in a prison before his arrest. Subsequent reports had him bashed by prison guards following a prisoner protest in which he allegedly had no part. Edit. Clarification. Nash did not work in a prison. In his own words, quote, I have never worked for a prison. I used to work for disability services supporting adults with intellectual disabilities. It was a forensic service, though, and classified as medium security, but never a prison. I make that distinction very clearly because I've been a strong advocate for non-aversive positive behavior supports my entire career, fighting hard to change the landscape of disability support. How ironic I now find myself in the most coercive and aversive service model that there is. Hmm. Nash was extradited to the United States in June of this year. He is now remanded in a federal penitentiary in New York, meaning he has so far served nine months awaiting trial. Uh, Gary Davis is one of the others. He is accused of being Administrator Libertas. This is, again, one of the alleged administrators of the Silk Road underground market. The USA has also demanded his extradition. But he's in Ireland, and Irish authorities handled it a little differently, according to— 
compared to those in Australia. Davis was released on bail for a nominal amount on the night of his arrest. Irish courts will grant bail for someone uh, slated for extradition on the same basis as they would for a domestic case, i.e., if there's no evidence the accused is a flight risk uh, or will tamper with witnesses or commit further serious crimes. Consequently, by all accounts, Davis attends his hearings as a free man, though he has presumably been relieved of his passport and would need to report into Irish police periodically. Irish media do not seem to have much interest in the case since his arrest. And we'll give you the final update on the third of three arrested for helping run the Silk Road, allegedly, here in moments. Free Talk Live. Question. Could too many GMO foods and toxins be overloading your digestive and immune systems? Answer, yes. If you're searching for a powerful detox that's gentle enough to use every day, use Pro-EM1 from Terraganics. Pro-EM1 is a powerful liquid probiotic that uses good bacteria to suppress pathogens and gently eliminate toxins from your body. A healthy digestive system will cleanse and remove toxins, support weight loss, improve absorption of food nutrients, and aid in controlling yeast and other infections. Pro-EM1 is made with only non-GMO and certified organic ingredients, has no preservatives, and is dairy, soy, wheat, and gluten-free. Pro-EM1 is the key to your digestive health. Order Pro-EM1 Daily Probiotic Cleanse at Terraganix.com, spelled T-E-R-A-G-A-N-I-X.com, or call toll-free 866-369-3678. That's 866-369-3678. Also available through Amazon Prime. Pro-EM1 from Terraganix. Life's getting better. Hey guys, Mark Claire here, lionsofliberty.com, where we strive to advance the ideas of liberty daily. We bring you the Morning Roar. That's right, every Monday to Friday, we'll have a brand new edition of the Morning Roar, where we provide a roundup of some news stories that you may not find in the mainstream media or even in your typical social media news feed. We find stories that relate to the ideas of liberty and provide you with our liberty perspective on them. Every Monday, we have our longest-running feature, Mondays with Murray, named after the great libertarian Murray Rothbard, where we'll examine an article or an excerpt from his works and help convey his view, along with our little spin as well. We wrap it all up every Friday with Felony Friday, where our own John Odermatt goes out and takes a look at some sort of felony. There's felonies committed every day, you know, whether it's a felony committed by the police, a politician, or even an average citizen. You can find all of this and so much more over at lionsofliberty.com. Advancing the ideas of liberty daily. Why does a U.S. orthodontist make more than some CEOs? You get that dental bill and you'll know. Implants, partial or full bridge, the kids need braces? Fractions of U.S. prices. Balloon angioplasty for heart patients in the U.S. is $50,000. Thailand, under $7,000. Heart bypass, joint and hip replacement, cancer, many procedures under the price of your Obamacare deductible and copay. Don't risk bankruptcy. Hit us up now. We'll show you how at AsiaRunLikeHellGuide.com. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. You can sign up to receive the latest about the Liberty Radio Network via our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm.
It's Free Talk Live. We invite you to take control of the airwaves toll-free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You can join us online at freetalklive.com. With you tonight, Ian here. Cantwell. And Mark. Check out Chris Cantwell on his website, ChristopherCantwell.com. There are blogs, some very controversial, and also a podcast, which is also sort of a video show called Some Garbage Podcast. Yes, it is just Some Garbage Podcast, and if you really have nothing better to do with your time, <laughs> then you could spend two hours watching it. You certainly could. It's a weekly thing. and No, uh, it's not. No? It's, no. It's a, I, w- I want to try to do make it a, a more regularly thing. scheduled thing. I've been doing it. We were doing it weekly when I was in the when Eddie and I were sharing an office in New York. Lately, okay. I've been doing it sort of whenever. So Mark came and did a, an episode with me before the show right. that's on YouTube presently and on ChristopherCantwell.com. It'll be on the RSS feed of SomeGarbagePodcast.com later on. And to, I think actually tomorrow I'm going to have Josie on. Okay. So we were going to try to do the one show and then the cat got vandalized. We went chasing goons through the streets right. of Keene. And uh, this is Josie, uh, Josie Wales, aka Josie, Josie the, the Outlaw. Outlaw. Yeah, she is uh, move, making the move to Keene very, very soon. Yes, uh, sooner than later, as it turns out. She was going to come uh, in on uh, September 14th. Her living situation in Tamworth has become untenable, and she's uh, she's going to be moving pretty much immediately. I'm going to go with her to get her stuff tomorrow. I think uh, I think it's very exciting. I actually uh, invited her to moderate one of the panels at Keene Vention, which is coming up here in going to be real soon actually it's coming up in just over two months mm. uh at this point anyway i invited her to moderate uh, a new panel it's one that we sort of i threw around as an idea last year but it just didn't pan out um kind of a new mover it's like a newbie panel basically she's pretty new having just moved yeah. over, over the summer and the idea of the new movers panel would be to have people who are new within the last year somebody who's moved to new hampshire fairly recently right. uh, perhaps whether as part of the free state project or not doesn't matter I and mean, the key invention is not a free state project uh, event which is why you were invited last year yeah. to be one of the speakers chris to the and, chagrin of many <laughs> yep and uh and so you know i think that it's gonna be fun it'd be interesting to have like the newbie perspective up there last year we did the old school panel where people who've been around for a long time kind of reflected on all the different activism and the changes that have happened and of course, somebody who's new, you know, they're fresh into a situation, new blood, uh, new ideas, new activism. So it'll be interesting to bring her and have her decide who else to invite up there and what they'll talk about. We don't know. Yeah, I think I think it'll be good. Josie's a, a really interesting, entertaining person and uh, and easy to look at, too. So that helps. <laughs> Go to keenvention.info. You can actually uh, grab your tickets there for just 60 bucks. In either Bitcoin, you can pay with Bitcoin, or you can pay with a credit card through Eventbrite. So uh, it's coming up, by the way, uh, October 31st through November 2nd. Lots of other cool announcements still to come about Keenvention, so stay tuned. You, you know what You know what else is coming up in October? Hmm. Liberty Fest NYC. Oh, yes. And, uh, You're unf- going to that, I I, I I don't know now, because I was supposed to debate Jeffrey Tucker there, mm. and Jeffrey Tucker is back down. And this was, uh, what, use of force debate? No, it was, uh, it was the brutalist humanitarian thing, the thick, thin libertarian oh. thing. The raw what non-aggressionist is versus the, I want to add a whole bunch of... Of doohickeys to my libertarianism crap, right? <laughs> I don't so, really know what you mean. So wait, what's the thick thin? What's the, explain that for uh, for listeners? Okay, so the the thin libertarian position would be that uh, non aggression principle. Period. Right. End of list, if you will. Uh, that the, that the initiation of force is immoral and impermissible, and all else is go for it. Right. And if you don't like it, then you just don't associate it that's with it. And that's thin your, but libertarianism. That's thin libertarianism. Yes. Now thick libertarianism. And, uh, is that your perspective? The thin libertarian. Yes, I'm a Roth. Okay. Guardian anarcho-capitalist, and if it's not non-aggression, it's not part of my political position, right? right. I'm, I'm concerned with the use of force in society, and as and I stand in good company with that, with Lou Rockwell and Tom Woods and a number of other people. Jeffrey Tucker also used to write from that perspective, and you could go read Jeffrey Tucker's older writings at the Mises Institute, where he says some pretty some pretty edgy things, but at some point he got hooked up with Kathy Reisenwitz and Students for Liberty and some other like Koch Brothers-funded outfits uh, who were funding his efforts at Liberty.me, and, uh, and this uh, led uh, apparently to a change in opinion that you know now we must be very concerned about being sensitive to certain protected groups of people you know certain certain ethnic groups and uh, you know a particular gender is is now uh, deserving of special uh, care and sensitivity and uh, and this is something that I I can't stand I I think that that's just ridiculous to treat people 
as people, and I don't really care if they're mm-hmm. men or women or blacks or whites, and I don't think that there are protected classes of people. Um, <clears throat> so in any case, I had written an article in response to him. He wrote an article against libertarian brutalism where he reduced that non-aggression core libertarian principle down to this uh, style of architecture. And uh, I said, this is Jeffrey Tucker's case against libertarianism. And it set off this whole entire thing. This is why my house has been nicknamed the Brutalist House and why I had a— You really a, embraced this Brutalist Yeah, I, uh, I thought term. it was great because it was actually like an astute reference, right? Like the thing is I didn't really like the, the article that he put out, but it was an astute reference that Brutalism is this like style of architecture that really valued like function over form. It didn't much care for aesthetics, right? And uh, for that reason, it sort of became popular with like socialist governments because they just wanted to show it as like a form of—as uh, a show of like function and strength. Right. So uh, I didn't like being associated with, you know, socialist governments, obviously, but it was an astute reference that I'm like, no, this is this is a function over form. This is not concerned with aesthetics. This is the, the position. And if you follow it through to its rational conclusions, you reach good outcomes. All right. So uh, let me let me jump back real quick on the thick and thin libertarianism uh, before we go on. To, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what happened with Jeffrey Tucker and, and uh, the New York convention that you're going to be allegedly attending maybe so thick versus thin thin libertarianism defined as only looking at the non-aggression principle the idea that it's wrong to aggress against your neighbors for political or social purposes or whatever purpose um to initiate aggression against uh, against people and you're saying thick libertarianism has has more to do with that my understanding of thick and then correct me if i'm wrong would be that somebody who uh who adheres to this idea of thick libertarianism Mm -hmm. is one who says that well in order to have a functioning society we need more than just the non-aggression principle so for instance uh the non-aggression principle doesn't say anything about racism and, right. uh, and I am not a fan of racism. I think it's pretty despicable behavior by other by other human beings to judge somebody negatively based on the color of their skin uh, instead of looking at somebody as an individual. So considering libertarianism, like thin libertarianism, the non-aggression principle doesn't address that, shouldn't there be more to creating a good society than just non-aggression? Well, I would say that there's more to creating a good society than non-aggression, right? But these things all happen as a matter of our own preferences. But that doesn't have to do with libertarianism. It has nothing to do with libertarianism. It has nothing to do with freedom. If I I make fun of uh, someone because of their race, like this would be called racist by by a lot of people, right? Mm -hmm. And so this is nothing to do with your freedom. I'm not oppressing you if if I make fun of your skin color or your wheelchair or your genitalia, right? So these are all things that I think um, you know, I'm, I'm not if somebody was like someone who, uh, you know, just hated black people. Right. If they just like I hate people because of their skin color, like I probably wouldn't want to hang out with that guy either. But that's just my right. own personal preference. And it has nothing to do with liberty. He's not an oppressor. He's not committing aggression. Right. So if somebody wants he's to just be a, an, it's just a jerk. And if somebody wants to be a racist, I think the best thing that you could do is just go let them be a racist. If somebody wants to be separate from other races, then just go be separate from other races. I don't think it does any good to, like, compel you to, you know, integrate into the society. Do I want to put a Klan member in a black neighborhood and no. tell him to get used to it? No, that's ridiculous. So, uh, you know, I don't like being the guy who makes the libertarian case for racism, right? Like, I don't like doing that because that's terribly unpopular, but it's an important thing to understand that when people are talking about unpopular things, this doesn't mean that these people need to be, you know, expelled from the society and punished and, and all of these things. Well, so. they probably would be, and this is kind of, uh, they'd be expelled from certain societies and they end up, if they stuck with with their racism, they'd end up in racist societies where people would probably not have to deal with the races they didn't like because the races they didn't like wouldn't live in those particular societies if we had a libertarian world. And this is one of the things that I, one of the reasons I haven't really waded into the thick and thin debate is because I largely think there is no debate. Look, the debate isn't here. Once you realize that the debate doesn't exist, then there's not a problem. And I, I just, you know, I'm I'm not excited about it because I believe that if you allow things to be voluntary and free, that competition will set in. We'll find out the good ideas from the bad ideas. Mm-hmm. The people that, uh, you know, have this idea and people have an opposite idea, you know, one of their societies will do better. The other one will, you know, fade away. All right, let's come back with uh, more. Your thoughts are welcome here. 855-450-FREE. And don't forget, you can go grab your free Bitcoin wallet right now over at blockchain.com. There's more coming up on Free Talk Live. 
This is Mark Edge of Free Talk Live, and I've got something awesome to share with you. I've recently joined Liberty.me. It's an online city devoted to people who love liberty. Break free of the flame wars and bridge-dwelling denizens of Facebook. You deserve better. You deserve a friendly, ad-free social network where you can chat 24 hours a day with like-minded souls around the world. Attend live interactive classes with experts on economics, finance, politics, and money. Access a vast library of books and discuss them with your reading group. Better your life with exclusive self-help guides on investing, self-defense, homeschooling, security, healthcare, saving money, and starting a business. Become a libertarian luminary yourself and get paid in the process by publishing your works on Liberty.me. Get tipped via PayPal and Bitcoin. The first step towards freedom is to invest in yourself. Start your free 30-day trial now at Liberty.me. I love being a member of Liberty.me and I think you will too. The first month is free. Sign up and say hello. It's It's the heart of summer across America. Thoughts turn to childhood and long days of fun. Everybody would love to feel like a kid again. And HB Extract can be a vital tool in your battle to stay vibrant and young as it supports healthy blood pressure and circulation while balancing cholesterol. GCN and longtime sponsor HB Extract want to help keep your heart healthy with the 30 Bottles 30 Days Summer Giveaway. Enter to win by visiting GCNlive.com between now and August 29th and click on the contest button banner in the top left corner of the page. HB Extract has helped tens of thousands of people worldwide feel good again. And they've done it with HB Extract's exclusive formula of wild crafted and organic herbs. Here's to you enjoying many more long, warm, and fun-filled summers free of pain and sickness. Visit GCNlive.com and enter to win in the 30 Bottle 30 Days Summer Giveaway with HB Extract. A healthy heart is a happy heart. Sign up now at GCNlive.com. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here, and I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at LRN.FM? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at LRN.FM. That's LRN.FM. Hi, this is Michael Dean from the Freedom Fiends Radio Show. The internet has lowered the cost barrier for a worldwide radio show to a price approaching zero. Yet there is one arena where you still need thousands of dollars to approach the audio quality of the corporate media. Doing a live spoken show with more than one host in different geographic locations. Our program, Fiend Phone, will solve that problem and it will be given away free. Go to fiendphone.com to see what you can do to help. That's F-E-E-N-P-H-O-N-E dot com. What's up next? Visit the Liberty Radio Network program guide to find out at shows.lrn.fm. That's shows.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up anything that you want by dialing toll-free here, 855-450-FREEZE, the number. That's 855-450-3733. That's the Pro XPN toll-free line. You can join us online. Just go to freetalklive.com and enjoy the features we have waiting for you on the site. Do you need focus, feeling fatigued, trying to get the extra edge when it counts? 
Check out modafinil from modup.net. Studies show one in five students are using this cognitive enhancer, offering multiple benefits, including a double-digit increase in short-term memory, fighting off fatigue, and greater focus overall so you can get things done. Of course, school season is about to kick up yet again. I know here in Keene, uh, it's apparently move-in day for Keene State College, so a lot of young people coming back into town here. Businessmen are also interested in modafinil around the world. Uh, they're talking about modup.net and how it's making the difference in their work and giving them the critical edge that they need. In fact, they make it affordable at modup.net for everyone to take advantage of the benefits of modafinil by being 80 to 85% lower in price than the brand name. But don't mistake low prices for inferior quality. They ensure that purity and potency are consistent to that of the branded version. Hey, remember, Free Talk Live is an international radio show, and modup.net ships worldwide. It's your responsibility to know if local prescription requirements and laws apply. Modup.net also gives you a sweet Bitcoin discount, 33% off when you pay with Bitcoin. And you can also use code FTL to get 10 free tablets with your order at modup. That's M-O-D-U-P, modup.net. Don't forget code FTL. It's world-class service at a great price for modafinil. Modup.net with code FTL. So, uh, to the story, here the bigger story. We were talking earlier about the Silk Road. They arrested three of the administrators. The original guy, the alleged founder of the site, Dread Pirate Roberts, a man supposedly uh, alleged to be uh, Ross Ulbricht, his real name, Ross Ulbricht, whether or not he's Dread Pirate Roberts, you know, still has yet to be proven in court. Uh, his three of his associates, or three men alleged to be his associates in co-administrating the Silk Road underground black marketplace, were arrested in December. We gave you updates on two of the three a few moments ago, and now here's the third of those three. Uh, we talked about Libertas already. He was one of two main administrators, and then the other was Inigo. And of course, uh, fans of the Princess Bride movie know about Dread Pirate Roberts and Inigo Montoya. These are two of the characters uh, in the film. And of course, Inigo was known as sort of the right-hand man, if you will, to Dread Pirate Roberts. They didn't have six fender fingers, I can tell you that. That's where the uh, the names came from. And Hello, my name is Inigo Montoya. So that should kill give my you... father. Yep. Prepare to die. That's who we're talking about <laughs> here. Um, and, but we're talking about somebody whose name was allegedly Inigo on the site. Andrew Michael Jones of Norfolk, Virginia is the man alleged to be uh, Inigo. And turns out Andrew Jones is a member of the Free State Project. Signer. Okay, signer, participant, whatever. He's, uh, I think participant's the official term they use. He's a participant. He's someone who has signed the statement of intent, somebody whose intention it was, and hopefully he'll still get the chance to do this because he is facing life in prison. Uh, but it was his intention to move to New Hampshire and to get active to achieve more liberty in our lifetime. The statement of intent of the Free State Project is roughly that you'll move to New Hampshire and you'll exert the maximum practical effort to achieving a government that's maximum role is the protection of life, liberty, and property, as I understand it. Uh, it's my recollection. You can go to Free State. They don't State. use the term government. They use society, but okay. okay yeah, a can... society where the maximum role of government is to protect person and property. Yeah, I thought the word government was, was in there. I don't think so. A well, society where the maximum role of government, of government. Okay. is yeah. to... Yeah. yeah. Um, that sounds right. So go and check it out at freestateproject.org. But uh, anyway, that's kind of... The, the news is, is that he's a Free State Project participant. And that's what uh, the news that I broke over at freekeen.com. Plus, there's more details on exactly what's happening with him. He is out on bail. Uh, according to the story at freekeen.com, which is actually uh, po kind of posted to the top of the site right now, he's accused of similar allegations as Ross Ulbricht, who is the uh, alleged infamous site's creator and head, uh, allegedly the head administrator. Of course, Ross has been getting all the news coverage, even though Andrew is facing conspiracy to commit money laundering, narcotics trafficking, and hacking charges, just like Ross, and is also, like Ross, facing spending the rest of his life in federal prison. Now, while Ulbricht was not offered bail at all, Andrew was able to get out on $1 million bail thanks to his Jeez. parents, who don't have anything close to that amount of money, so they put up their house and their both of their retirement incomes in order to secure a million-dollar bond on their son. Wow. His bail conditions include 24-7 house arrest at his parents' house, and he cannot have any kind of interaction whatsoever with an internet-capable device. Inconceivable! 
His girlfriend, uh, Birdie, who is also a Free State Project participant, is the one who reached out to me. And she and Andrew's family have set up a website to accept contributions to his legal fund as they can use all the help that they can get. The website to which you may contribute, which I've done, uh, is drewsdefense.org. That's drewsdefense.org. Now, of course, uh, she reached out to me in this case because they'd actually met me. Uh, back uh, two years ago, they came to, or about two years ago, in 2012, December of 2012, they came to visit Keene, uh, as many do. Uh, many liberty activists who are considering making a move to New Hampshire, they're going to come new, uh, visit New Hampshire before they decide to move or before they decide to where they want to move. And he and his girlfriend had both come here. So I had met them, and so I knew who they were um, as a result of that. That's why she you know, approached me and she prevent, presented some information that sort of validated the, her claim. Because there's obviously the possibility that Andrew Jones, the person who was arrested and charged with operating the Silk Road, is not in point of fact this Andrew Jones. And of course, it's Andrew Michael Jones is his middle name. So it's there's a, still a small chance that Andrew Michael Jones of Norfolk, Virginia, who is a Free State Project participant and has visited Keene, is not actually the same Andrew Michael Jones of the of Virginia who was arrested for running the Silk Road. So she, you know, presented some information, some ID and some court uh, lawyer attorney stuff. And I talked to his mom on the on the phone as well. Um, so I'm pretty convinced like that this is uh, this is the guy. What would be the point in spoofing this? To try to raise money. Yeah. Okay. To scam people out of money. Okay. Basically. Did you hear uh do you, you know did you hear the story of when he got arrested? Andrew Jones? Yeah, when they they came and they accused him of a crime and he said, "You keep using that word." I do not think that means what you think it means. <laughs> you did good job. You squeezed it in. <laughs> so uh, back to the story here. So again, he was uh, bailed out on a million dollars bail. He's locked in his parents' house at this point, house arrest. And uh, his mom, who's 68 years old, told me this about him. Quote, he's very bright, kind, generous, and has always been an idealist. When he first told me about bitcoins, he helped me envision a world where the central banks are no longer in charge of money. If it were instead a peer-based monetary system, so much good could come from that. I have hope for a better world thanks to his generation, which is apparently he's a millennial. Anyway, unlike Ross's case, Andrew does not face the kingpin charge. Plus, he has not been libeled with allegations of murder for hire as Ross has. Hopefully, that will help with his fundraising ability. He's retained the services of attorney Samuel M. Braverman of New York, and the bill will likely be very expensive. As have many activists uh, looking at moving to New Hampshire, his uh, girlfriend and he made the pilgrimage to Keene in December of 2012 and came to visit a social Sunday. I met both of them there and truly hope that he can get through this difficult time with the minimum damage possible. If Andrew didn't administer the Silk Road, then he's a man wrongfully accused. But if he did, he's a hero. The Silk Road was and is the most important development to happen to the black market in our lifetimes. It has reduced harm caused from unscrupulous dealers selling bunk product in the streets and has reduced violence by making both sides of each transaction anonymous and separating them by distance. No one can get beaten or killed in a Silk Road transaction. And the underground marketplace has a rating system, ensuring quality dealers are easy to identify. This open yet anonymous competition for international business results in product quality and selection going up while prices come down from what one would pay on the streets. Silk Road has literally saved lives, both of dealers and as well as users who would have overdosed on bad street drugs, but were instead able to get good quality product from the Silk Road. Well, yeah, I mean, what they were able to do is is that... Uh People there, although they have secret identities, so they have a what? What do they call that? A, um, a handle. A handle. That it's their handle, and that handle gets ratings. So you know, you log in under your handle's name, and then that handle gets a, a rating. So, um, you know, it's a it's a situation where they're able to say relatively anonymous, but they're still able to provide customer service mm -hmm. and the cust and and that way the marketplace can work because when you have a black market, the marketplace tends not to work uh, because yeah, it just doesn't work as well yeah the black market works yeah but that's it, it's been it, getting drugs to people for decades no at this point uh, we don't have any violence associated with uh, silk road that's right people generally got better products um you know you may not have known who it was but um you know just because you don't know whether the person's uh left-handed or not or keeping a secret that they might really be right-handed it doesn't matter 
So if Andrew Jones was involved in the Silk Road Enterprise, he should be given an award rather than prison time. Of course, that would be in a just world that understands the insanity of drug prohibition or any prohibition for that matter. So again, his uh, defense site is drewsdefense.org. You can go there and donate to him in Bitcoin. Uh, you can also donate via credit card slash PayPal. And I'm sure he and his family will very much appreciate it. They obviously have not gotten the same level of press coverage that Ross has. And of course, if you want to help Ross out, please go to freeross.org. Um, we'll come back with more. Your thoughts are welcome here on the Silk Road or whatever's on your mind. Hour number three on the way. This is Free Talk Live. Americans are reeling from Obamacare, higher prices, and an epidemic of policy lapses. AsiaRunLikeHellGuide.com has you covered. World-class medical and surgery at one of Asia's most modern hospitals. 300 doctors, surgeons, and dentists serving 300,000 patients a year. Fractions of U.S. prices. Friends or family forced to go out of pocket? Avoid bankruptcy. Tell them to run. Run like hell. Hit us up now. We'll show you how. AsiaRunLikeHellGuide.com. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at freeross.org. That's freeross.org. Did you know that Free Aid is a mutual aid, educational, and networking organization? At Free Aid, we support volunteers who provide first aid. We do outreach to the public about health and safety, and we bring together medically skilled freedom lovers. Free Aid is made possible by your generous support. Donors can receive great gifts like first aid kits, t shirts, silver dime cards, and hoodies. The Free Aid Silver Dime Card Project is sponsored in part by Roberts and Roberts Brokerage, Freedoms Phoenix, and Don't Tread on Meme. Visit fr33aid.com. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty News and activist updates online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Wednesday, August 20th, 2014. Gold open today at $1,297. Silver open at $19.51, and Bitcoin is trading around $494. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from Roberts & Roberts Brokerage Incorporated, specializing in precious metals since 1977. Online at rrbi.co or by phone at 800-874-9760. In the news, on Tuesday, an American photojournalist, described by friends and family as friendly, courageous, and impatient, was beheaded by ISIS, the jihadist group seeking to create an Islamic state in Syria and Iraq. James Wright Foley, the reporter ISIS has claimed to have killed, has been missing since Thanksgiving of 2012 when he disappeared while in Syria. In a video titled A Warning to America and posted on social media, a masked man speaks to the camera in English in what experts believe to be a British accent. After beheading Foley, the masked man shows the camera another captured journalist, Stephen Joel Saltlaw and addresses President Obama, stating, The life of this American citizen, Obama, depends on your next decision. Friday evening, the U.S. Department of Justice released a heavily redacted memo that deals with the targeted assassination of American citizen Anwar al The Justice Department was responding to a lawsuit filed by the American Civil Liberties Union and the New York Times that sought to uncover the legal justification for the drone bombing which led to his death. The memo was written on February 19, 2010, by former Assistant Attorney General David J. Barron, who is now a judge on the First Circuit Court of Appeals. Barron asserted that killings in self-defense is not assassination. Although al was an American citizen, the memo states that applying constitutional rights to a trial in this circumstance could significantly disrupt the ability of the political branches to respond to foreign situations involving national interests. 
Israel's new health minister, Yale German, has announced that she will oversee a ban on water fluoridation. German has stated that she believes that the chemical, known as hydrofluoric acid, is effective in reducing cavities. But she believes that instead of forcing Israelis to consume fluoridated water, the public should have a right to choose what they consume. Support for Liberty Beat comes from Brave New Books, your local source for all things Bitcoin. Now hosting a Bitcoin ATM located in Austin, Texas, 1904 Guadalupe Street, or online, bravenewbookstore.com. And support comes from the notorious activist, Michael Cargill. He has a new show called Come and Talk It, live Sunday afternoons at 4 o'clock on 1370 AM in Austin. This is the Liberty Beat for Wednesday, August 20th, 2014. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com. The Electronic Frontier Foundation has published an updated version of its cell phone guide to protesters. The guide details strategies an individual should consider during protests to protect their information from law enforcement. Other topics include tips for protecting your phone and your passwords, as well as how to encrypt communications and successfully document protests. The EFF states that since the first release of the report in 2011, the public has learned about the massive request for cell phone information from law enforcement agencies, as well as the use of surveillance technologies by the U.S. government. The first ever Pacific Northwest Freedom Fest took place last weekend. Liberty lovers gathered at a Washington campground and shared good food, good fun, and good old campfire conversation. Plans already in the works for next year's festival. The second annual Vermont Freedom and Unity Festival also took place last weekend. Adam Kokash, who recently published a new book titled Freedom, headlined the event. Now, we asked Adam his thoughts on the event, and he said, The Freedom and Unity Festival was an amazing gathering of some of the most hardcore yet peaceful and loving people in the entire freedom movement. This upcoming weekend will feature the second annual Midwest Peace and Liberty Festival. That's going to happen in Delton, Michigan. And you can learn more by going to the website miplc.org. That's miplc.org. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from Cabo Bob's. Non-GMO chips, homemade tortillas, and no high fructose corn syrup in anything. Visit them at one of their two locations in Austin, Texas. 500 East Ben White Boulevard and 2828 Rio Grande near the UT campus. This is the Liberty Beat for Wednesday, August 20th, 2014. I'm Brian Hagan reporting, reminding you, spread liberty with a smile. Amid the catastrophic economic crisis spurred by Tuesday's release of This Christmas, the new holiday-themed album by John Travolta and Olivia Newton-John, economic experts told reporters today the Christmas CD has quickly plunged the nation into a double-dip recession. When investors learned that one-time screen couple John Travolta and Olivia Newton-John had reunited after 35 years for an album of timeless Christmas classics, investors had no choice but to pull money from markets immediately. We were already on shaky ground with the collapse of the U.S. subprime mortgage market and the reversal financial crisis in Europe, but consumer confidence plummeted after Americans saw the new album with a picture of Travolta and Olivia Newton-John holding cups of hot cocoa. We believe that when other countries find out the album features a Christmas song that pays tribute to summer nights, we could be looking at a global contagion. This is the blackest day on Wall Street in two decades. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. Coming up, the latest on Ferguson, Missouri. I know uh, that's been on Chris Cantwell's mind here tonight. We can talk about that. Your calls are certainly welcome. You may bring up anything that happens to be on your mind. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. One of the alleged administrators of the Silk Road is... A man named Andrew Jones of Norfolk, Virginia. He is someone who is a Free State Project participant, but unfortunately for him, uh, he had not yet made the move to New Hampshire. And so I haven't asked this question specifically, and I've intended to, 
I've been interacting with his girlfriend because he is prohibited from using any sort of internet connected device. Again, the Silk Road and infamous underground uh, drug marketplace. They sold fi- fake IDs, uh, hacking tools, other things of uh, you know questionable value. And, uh, and, you know, it was this sort of just amazing site that for two years was completely unmolested by the federal government. They finally shut it down late last year in October when they raided and arrested the alleged administrator of the site, Dread Pirate Roberts, a.k.a. allegedly Ross Ulbricht. The site was shut down for approximately one month and it has reappeared since as Silk Road 2.0 being run by ostensibly different individuals uh, this time around. And it's running strong, actually. The, the current status of Silk Road is, in point of fact, I believe the last time I, I checked in there, uh, they had paid back all of their customers. What happened was toward the end of 2013, I believe it was the very end of 2013, there was some kind of a hack that resulted in customers having their money basically dumped out of their accounts on this on the silk road and they lost a lot a lot of bitcoins and basically they came back and said look you know we admitted we screwed this up the administrators of the the new silk road said we we really botched this one up and and you know obviously if you need to leave we understand we don't blame you for not wanting to deal with us anymore but if you'll stick it out if you'll keep going with uh, with this site, we will pay you back. You know, they had records of whatever was in the accounts before they were emptied. So they uh, allegedly have made all those payments. They allegedly have paid back through the continuation of running the site. Basically, this the way the site works is they take a you know percentage off of each sale in the same way that eBay does uh, does the same thing. Every product that's put up for sale on the Silk Road 2.0. Uh, a portion of that, I don't know if it's like 4 or 5% or something, goes to the administrators of the site. And so basically they've been, or at least they claim, uh, they've been turning around all of those commissions into paying back the members of the site who lost money on the site. Which, so, I guess people trust the site. You know, even though they, they botched it up with the, the security several months ago, they're still going strong. There's thousands of uh, listings on the site as as we speak. Everybody makes mistakes, um, and especially when you're in an emergent business like online drug sales, you're <laughs> going to see. I mean, you know, you've got to mess it up in order to get it right. That's how business goes. Yeah, I could choose to switch over to another site, and uh, you know they potentially could make some, you know, have some problems too. Oh yeah, there was an, uh, one of the Silk Road replacements because when the first Silk Road went down in October, there were at least two or three other sites that sprung up to take the business. Uh, you know, people were looking for places to go, and so one of those sites was called Sheep Marketplace. And sure enough, they rounded people in like sheep and then fleeced them. Uh, they, yeah. they, they, that whoever it was that was running that site uh, allegedly ran off with everything mm. at one point. And I so. imagine you could run off with quite a bit in a, in a market like that. Sure, because all you have to do is keep the market operating for a little while and people will start to trust it. And right. then they'll start to hold money in it. And then once that amount has reached an amount that is worth shutting it all down over to, you know, to the one-time quick-take sure. uh, s- scam artist... And that's what they'll do. So that's kind of a history of, uh, of the Silk Road up until now. It's still going. It's still going strong. So even though they're persecuting Ross Ulbricht and Andrew Jones, Gary Davis, and the other uh, gentlemen uh, for these ostensible crimes, which, of course, involve no victim whatsoever. Now, they are alleging Ross Ulbricht did murders for hire, but uh, I think he's only been charged with that once in a district court in Maryland, and that's a separate case from the federal case against him or something like that. Maybe it is a federal case against him, but just in a different federal court. I'm still not real clear on exactly what's happening with the alleged murder for higher charge with Ross Ulbricht, but it seemed awfully uh, awfully convenient for when they arrested this guy, Ross, uh, who, if he's Dread Pirate Roberts, is a real dyed-in-the-wool, libertarian, liberty-minded guy. I mean, they had, like, the Dread Pirate Roberts reading list on the Silk Road. And but this Russ guy Ulbricht work. is, too. Ross Ulbricht is definitely a libertarian. I mean, right. that much there's there's no doubt about. So, but the, you know, based on what Dread Pirate Roberts would say in his posts, in his publicly accessible posts, this guy was a real true libertarian. And so the idea that he would also be someone who would hire a hitman 
uh, on his competition or something like that. It just seemed so unike. Not the on character. his competition. That was not the allegation. The allegation there were multiple was allegations. well. My my understanding of the allegations was that he hired hitmen to get rid of informants who were trying to extort him for money. That was and one of the that, that is a libertarian thing to do. If you are being coerced, you are being threatened with life in a cage if you don't do what someone says you have to do, that's a threat against your life. And he's responding to that threat against his safety. So I don't think that that would be an unlibertarian thing of him to do at all. Well, that's an interesting point. And uh, I, can, I can see where you're coming from on that. Unfortunately, you know, I guess... He wouldn't have known whether the, that was really being threatened, right? And the other thing is he wouldn't have known whether he was targeting the right person. So when I was reading the in, the indictment uh, of Ross Ulbricht and they mentioned these plots, these alleged murder-for-hire plots, which the only evidence they have for this is what they claim they found on the Silk Road— as far as the messages in his inbox, basically. Well, one of them, as I understood it, it actually was a, an informant. It was, uh, there was, I, I thought that it was a fed, that he ended up hiring fed to kill somebody was what I thought the the story was. And I thought they even like sent him a fake like proof of death photo. Yes, um, yes, there was all of this that allegedly happened. But again, it all happened over the and, Silk and, Road messaging And at system. this point, we don't have a lot of sort of, it's, it's very unclear. What we're very clear with as far as like the drug charges and the kingpin charge and that sort of thing they're never they're not being very clear with this charge i haven't heard about the murder charge th that he's been charged at all so yeah, i had heard well first we'd heard he hadn't been indicted on the murder but then i did hear subsequently that there has been some sort of an indictment handed down out of the maryland uh federal district court okay that's my understanding of it please feel free to call in and correct because uh, again i can't say i'm i'm intimately familiar with that particular side of things but again the only evidence that they have for this is you know what has come out of the silk road copy when they allegedly copied the entire contents of the silk road server the fbi that you know who's to say they didn't completely manufacture this who's to say they didn't just come up with this as a way to tarnish this guy's reputation to make him look like he was hiring somebody because yes there were a couple of dip there were at least two different instances that i can recall and one of them had to do with someone who was ostensibly going to roll over on him and snitch him out uh basically but there's no way to know for sure like the person who was approaching him uh, or the person he was talking with about the potential hit how do you know you've got the right guy? I mean, you've got an anonymous person on the internet. How do you know for sure that this person has ferreted out the correct information about this? If he's uh, this a, individual? if he's a, if he did it, he's a fool. Um, it, if he those, hired a hitman, you yeah, mean? all those bitcoins he had, he could have easily turned over the uh, the, the website you know, Silk Road, to one of his He could have taken the run for it. Yeah, taken saying. the money and gone. That's true. And then also the weirdest thing, the weirdest thing to me about the alleged murder for hire uh, plot was that he uh, allegedly made a transfer, a bank transfer, to pay off this federal hitman. To pay off the agent who was masquerading as a hitman, he allegedly wired money into an Australian bank account. That's insanity. It doesn't make sense. That doesn't make sense at I all. I mean, Ross Ulbricht, if he is Dread Pirate Roberts, or whoever Dread Pirate Roberts was, was no fool. Yeah, if and he had the sense to be trading in Bitcoin and in the first place. trying to anonymize this thing, and then he goes into, for the worst count of the indictment, <laughs> is the thing that he gave his identity away for, and, that's completely ridiculous. Yeah, that's it does amazing. Make sense. So, I mean, to me, like the whole thing about uh, hiring a hitman just seems so manufactured. It stinks. From the word go. The toll free number is 855 450 free. But it's not all about Ross Ulbricht. Andrew Jones is also facing similar charges. He's out on bail, thank goodness. And hopefully, I was talking with his girlfriend about maybe since he's out on bail, I was like, look, he can do things Ross can't do. Make a video. Have him talk into a video camera about his experience. There's more coming up. It's Free Talk Live. Americans are reeling from Obamacare, higher prices, and an epidemic of policy lapses. AsiaRunLikeHellGuide.com has you covered. World-class medical and surgery at one of Asia's most modern hospitals. 300 doctors, surgeons, and dentists serving 300,000 patients a year. Fractions of U.S. prices. Friends or family forced to go out of pocket? Avoid bankruptcy. Tell them to run. Run like hell. Hit us up now. We'll show you how. AsiaRunLikeHellGuide.com. Wake up and smell the freedom. One of the easiest things you can do to help Liberty is to torrent Freedom Fiends episodes to help keep them drone-proof. You can set up your home computer to download and share Freedom Fiends archives over BitTorrent. 
You can even set up scheduling so it only shares while you're asleep or at work. Put your unused computing power to work and help keep the Freedom Fiends around well into the future. Simply go to freedomfiends.com and click on the Torrent Club link and learn how to torrent and share Freedom Fiends archives. Adam Miller here with Midas Resources. Today, August 20th, 2014, gold opened at 1297.40. A one-ounce gold coin can be purchased for 1344.56, 672.28 for a half ounce, or 336.14 for a quarter ounce. That's 1344.77, 672.28, and three. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. Have you ever wondered why banks, stockbrokers, investment advisors won't talk about gold IRAs? Wait a sec. Gold and silver is going up while Congress is trying to settle on the next debt increase. And there's no end to this madness. That old 401k and IRA can be converted into physical gold without tax consequences. I explain this in my book, 10 Reasons to Buy Gold. Don't let time slip away. Call for your free copy today, 800-686-2237. Get away from that Washington spin and get honest answers about gold. 800-686-2237. The book is free, 800 686 Hi, I'm Derek J. To me, an activist's calling is to actively work to advance a cause. The cause for which I work is personal freedom. I believe my life is best when I engage in voluntary interactions and self-government. I reject the idea that anyone else has a higher claim to my life or my body than I do. I see people who call themselves the government as a threat to my personal freedom. I realize you may feel differently, but my relationship with the people who call themselves the government is completely involuntary. If Starbucks used some of its money to drop bombs, I wouldn't shop there. So why would I support the American empire? The empire does not require my consent. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. That's VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. Bring up anything you want right here toll free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Join us online. Just go to freetalklive.com and enjoy the features there. They're all totally free, unlike those other talk show hosts who want to charge you for their websites. Go to freetalklive.com and enjoy. I love My Magic Mud. Um, it is a great product. I know you guys have had an opportunity to use My Magic Mud. What is it that you like, Ian? What's the best thing you like the most about My Magic Mud? I just think it's fun to use, but I also believe that it works because I've uh, I've seen it work on some pretty yellow teeth. I haven't uh, I haven't been using it that long to see if it takes off the the yellow that I had earned from many years of smoking cigarettes, but I do I feel like my mouth feels cleaner afterwards, and it is like it takes a little bit of getting used to like spitting out black stuff like it's like it shouldn't be in my mouth is like my first instinct with it right, but uh, it doesn't have like a, a bad taste and it's no, no, no. there's no taste to it at all really, but it's it it works and it feels uh, it makes my mouth feel clean and. I noticed stuff. a difference, uh, not not in my mouth because my teeth weren't particularly yellow, but I did notice a difference uh, in my girlfriend's mouth. First first time. 
There you go, mymagicmud.com. Go there, watch Dr. Griffin Cole's video while he, where he explains a lot of the benefits of My Magic Mud. It's mymagicmud.com, and you can go see a video that we've put up at mud.freetalklive.com. Well, it's not, we, we linked to a video, I should say. It's not like we produced it or anything like that. Mud.freetalklive.com. Do right. you guys want a video of me using My Magic Mud? And my <laughs> <laughs> In a bikini. I don't think it would help sell products, actually, so we won't do that. <laughs> so uh, talking about selling product, we have been discussing the Silk Road and the latest on what's going on with their alleged administrators, the Silk Road being the infamous underground black market that you can access only through the Tor allegedly anonymizing system. There was, of course, news recently that the Tor system might have some sort of problems. They claim they've solved those issues. You know, whether you believe them or not is another question. Obviously, there are people who believe in Tor because the Silk Road continues on today, uh, unabated. And uh, and, it, and arguably as popular as it's, as it's ever been. But in the meantime, uh, while the Silk Road is continuing, the original administrators, the men who are alleged to be administrators, are facing life in prison for not harming anyone at all. And uh, we're going to continue to keep you up to date on what's going on with their cases, especially now that uh, actually at the at the Porcupine Freedom Festival this year, I don't know if y'all heard about this, but apparently Ross Ulbricht's mother, Lynn Ulbricht, she signed the the statement of intent. She Did became, she really? Yeah, she, she became a Free State Project participant, mm. as I understand it. And obviously uh, Andrew Jones, who is uh, the guy allegedly known as Inigo on the kind of like the second in command almost of the, the original Silk Road site. He already is a Free State Project participant, and so hopefully he'll be able to get through this with the minimum amount of prison time. Uh, I, I don't know. I mean, some people are optimistic about this. It's hard for me to be optimistic about this. I mean, just having seen the way the judge in the case, of, at least in Ross's case, has kicked back the motion to dismiss that, that, that they fired, filed earlier this year, kicked it back in their face and was not very nice in the way that the, the order was written. Uh, another motion has been filed by the Ulbricht attorneys, and we'll see what happens with that. I mean, obviously, they're trying to get the charges dismissed right out the gate without ever having to go to trial. And I... I'd love to see them succeed in that, but I know Not that in my happen. I know that in my cases when I filed motions to dismiss, they've almost always been uh, you know rejected. The only time I haven't had a motion to, to dismiss rejected was when I was standing in court and the cop didn't come to testify. Then I motioned to dismiss the case. In that case, it was a speeding ticket, and the case was dismissed. Uh, but. In even all of when the they, legal arguments I've ever made, none of them have ever been accepted for even, dismissal. Even when the court knows that, that the case is frivolous, they they very rarely dismiss cases. So That's when, true. So when you've got a situation where that much resources have been sunk into the investigation, that the federal government is really trying to flex its muscles and be like, ha ha ha, your Bitcoin and Tor network won't stop us from enforcing our laws. There's no mm -hmm. way they're just going to throw those things out. Uh, you know, I don't. But it's know. more billable hours hours for his attorney. That's of for sure. course, and I mean, it's it's entirely possible that uh, you know the evidence doesn't stand and a jury acquits them. Who knows? But I th I'm willing to bet that these guys all take plea deals, and that's the hope that they have for themselves i imagine statistically um you know the 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 numbers are with you it's far fewer than one percent of arrests end up in going to trial especially when you're facing life in prison you know these guys are going to do whatever they have to to see the light of day again when they're when they're in a position and i'm not i'm not saying anything bad about them it's something that they're just a self-preservation thing but you know when you're facing that kind of time and they're like hey you plead out and you'll be out in five to ten or, you know, something like that. Uh, I, I imagine that they take it. And if I were their attorney, I'd certainly advise them to. Mm. We'll continue your calls and thoughts. Welcome. Let's go to Nathan. He's in Texas. By the way, you can reach us on Skype like Nathan did by contacting us at username lrn.fm. Go ahead, Nathan. Nathan on Skype. Nathan going once. Nathan going twice. We will try a little bit uh, further here and see if we can remedy whatever the audio issues are that are happening there. But the latest in the Ulbricht case, Ross Ulbricht, again, the man alleged to be Dread Pirate Roberts, the creator of the Silk Road. Just to kind of sum up the last story that we talked about a couple weeks ago, there's another pretrial motion that has been filed by his attorneys, basically arguing that the entire case needs to be thrown out because his Fourth Amendment uh, right from, you know, protection from unreasonable searches and seizures were violated. 
uh, that the government, you know, basically broke their own rules in the acquiring of the Silk Road server. And so because all of the evidence in the case is based off of what they gleaned from the Silk Road server, that it all should be thrown out based on the fruit of the poisonous tree doctrine. I'm going to go ahead and say that flying halfway across the planet to copy someone's hard drive is unreasonable. Is unreasonable? Yeah, unreasonable. Yeah. It's unreasonable. It, there's no reason to uh, to fly halfway around the world to uh, to check out this computer. So they go into some of the details on this, but I want I don't want to rehash it too much. Just kind of give you because we did talk about it in greater detail a few weeks ago when the news came out. But I just thought it was worth giving you an update on that. You're welcome to share your thoughts here. Now then, in other news, you've got the uh, Ferguson situation there in Missouri. It continues to develop. We didn't really get a chance to uh, to dig too deep into that yesterday, but as my understanding, yet another journalist, uh, photographer, has been arrested in Ferguson. Uh, this guy from Getty Photography, he was arrested. I'm not sure what the, uh, the circumstances were around it, but I imagine he was taking pictures of something that they didn't like him taking pictures of. The news article that I have includes several photos of the arrest and sort of the scene down there in Ferguson. Uh, apparently, things have not been getting better. The National Guard was brought in. I think those were the headlines yesterday or Monday. It was either Monday or, or Tuesday that the National Guardsmen had been ordered to come in, the state National Guard. And then the headline I saw the day after that was that if they hadn't, you know, they hadn't done any better than the police had done at quelling the uh, the unrest there in Ferguson. So I don't know if you guys have heard any more uh, further developments today. My what what I heard today is that now Eric Holder is going to Ferguson, the, the Attorney General of the well, United States. Solve it. Yeah, yeah, this is going to make matters better. Let's just uh, stir up the racial tensions just a little bit more in this place. Let's make this. You know, I I, I posted a Facebook status update last night. I said um, a man was killed by a cop. Your primary concern is race. That makes you a racist. You know, and and this is uh, exactly why the federal government is getting involved. Eric Holder, if this was a white kid who got shot, they wouldn't be going down there and doing this. And they're just stirring up the racial tensions, which is what the the rioting is about. I don't think I hear a whole lot of, hey, abolish the police department. Let's have a free society. They're pissed off because a white cop shot a black kid. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. You can take control and share your thoughts here on Free Talk Live. This is Dan Phillips. You owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands, and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement, and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpilla.com. My Magic Mud is a tooth whitening powder that removes plaque and detoxifies your mouth. It's safe for your enamel, giving you a beautiful polish and a dentist light clean after every use. My Magic Mud is also the perfect remedy for pain caused by sensitivity. It strengthens your teeth and gums for a strong, healthy smile. The ingredients are 100% natural and it's safe for children. Simply brush with My Magic Mud right before bedtime for a cleaning you can count on. Visit MyMagicMud.com. If you're looking for work, you know what I mean by elevator speech. It's the short version, saying just enough to make the listener want to listen more. Even if you're not a job seeker, effective communication skills have never been more important with money and attention so scarce now. So to cut through the clutter, choose every single word as though it was the last word the person you're speaking to will hear. Otherwise, it might be. Instead of saying, due to the fact that, say, because, and avoid mispronunciations. Say jewelry, not jewelry, which could offend. Undoubtedly, you don't want to say undoubtedly. And whatever you do, never use a preposition to end a sentence with. Just kidding. For more tips, hit survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. Imagine for a moment 
a radio program, the most personal of mediums that reaches hundreds of thousands of people on more than 140 radio stations across the U.S. and around the world through the Internet with podcasts and live streams. Imagine the advertising is affordable from $600 to $6,000 a month. Free Talk Live is that program. We will work with you to get clicks, calls, views, or sales. Email me at mark at freetalklive.com. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. Free Talk Live. It's obvious the government expects people to pay taxes, whether or not they have a law. They are a band of marauders. They are a violent band of thugs, and in my opinion, they're a group of strangers. I mean, if I all of a sudden wrote up an invoice for you, Robert, and send it to your house saying, you owe Free Talk Live $5,000 this year, or if you don't pay us, we're going to send some people after you to punch your face in. Would you cut me a check? I mean, because that's essentially what they're doing. That's essentially what the IRS does. They write a bunch of strangers, people they don't know, an invoice, and they include a bunch of obscure instructions that you're supposed to understand. And then at the very bottom, it says, if you don't follow these instructions to the T, we are going to charge you with a criminal offense and throw you in the clink. This is a threat. And I don't take kindly to threats. I don't know about you. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. You can watch the LRN Studio Cam and chat with other listeners anytime at cam.lrn.fm. That's cam.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up whatever you want. Just dial on in toll free here. Whether you want to comment on the Ferguson, Missouri situation, the Silk Road, or whatever happens to be on your mind, you don't have to talk about what we've been discussing here tonight to get on the air with us here on Free Talk Live. The toll free number for you is 855 450 free. We also have Skype. You can Skype into the show at username lrn.fm. You do need to send a contact request first. It will be approved, and then it'll be easy for you to call us on Skype from that point forward. I'm heading out to the first annual Marijuana Investment Conference in Houston on September the 8th. I'll be there mingling and finding out what the trends are in the um, the nascent and burgeoning field of uh, the marijuana industry. The market's new and wide open. Lots of people are going to be making lots of money. It, this isn't some kind of convention full of uh, potheads with bongs on sale. The Marijuana Investment Conference... Not that there's anything wrong with that. No, it's just not that. <laughs> MarijuanaInvestmentConferences.com is focused exclusively on bringing investors and legalized marijuana businesses together to create opportunities and grow the sector. I've never heard of a conference that proposes to do such a thing. So let's uh, you know bring the entrepreneurs, give them an opportunity to pitch their businesses and their ideas in front of bona fide investors. And yeah, these are the movers and the shakers. Yep, these um, are business people. These are business people, and I think it's going to be very interesting what's going to happen in the next <laughs> couple of years. So there's going to be sort of formal pitches. Of course, there'll be casual ones going on um, at the networking events. So please join me at the Weston Houston Memorial City on September the 8th, bright and early. Register early to get the discount. Account, marijuana investment conferences.com use coupon code FTL when you check in I've got, I'll have a little bit of FTL swag there I'll be happy to hand out to you if I can get uh, 10 people to sign up and I know I've already had got a few then uh, it pays for the whole thing marijuana investment conferences com code FTL all right so uh, let's I think people are surprised you're not going in Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, somebody's got to keep the, the ball uh, rolling here at the I, LRN.FM studios. I think it's, the, uh, I think it's the, 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 it says marijuana in the title, and they just expect you to go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I get where you're coming from. All right, so uh, the toll-free number here is 855-450-FREE. We've been talking about Ferguson, Missouri, and the continuing situation there. For those of you who don't know, 
Uh, it was over a week ago, it was last Saturday, that there was a shooting in Ferguson, which is a city, just a small city, I guess, outside of the town, outside of St. Louis. Uh, the shooting was uh, one cop shooting a young man who uh, was allegedly uh, the committing a robbery at some point earlier in the day. The stories differ as to whether or not the cop knew whether this individual was a suspect in that robbery or if the cop even knew about the robbery in the first place. So we don't know what all the facts are in that particular shooting, but one thing we know for sure is there's a dead guy and he died at the hands of a police officer. A lot of people are upset about that and upset about the perceived, and I think rightfully perceived, uh, lack of accountability that the police have uh, when it comes to shooting people to death and various other things that the police don't have any accountability for or that it's very difficult to hold them accountable for. So uh, not knowing how to appropriately hold people accountable, people have taken to the streets. And, uh, and that, unfortunately, has resulted in what a lot of times groups of crowds of people do, which is destroying property. And unfortunately, I don't think there's much that can, you know, much you can benefit from when you're destroying private property in a protest against government police. That's never really made much sense to me. Uh, but that's, you know, in some cases what happened here. I guess maybe people are too afraid to go and actually protest out in front of the police department. Uh, who knows? But if, if they're going to, you know, run into a building and destroy things, it sounds like the police department would be a fine place to do that. If you're going to do something, then why not target the government agencies well, rather than the poor guy running the quickie mart? Instead, they're going to go target the the quickie mart because you know what? This is not. Uh, un it's unfortunately. I mean, it's look. If you want to get outraged about police violence, I think that's a really reasonable thing to you know get concerned about. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. it just seems like this is just racially motivated in large part, and that's what. Really Really upsets me about what's going on down there. I'm going to take a counterpoint because I'm interested in this counterpoint, not because I believe it necessarily. So keep your, you know, breathe into a brown paper bag if you feel yourself hyperventilating it. But let's um, suggest for a second. Now, I agree with you philosophically, but this is probably the most passionate and widespread conversation that has gone on in my life nationwide about the role of police the accountability of police, the possibility of putting body cameras on police. I'm seeing that all over Facebook right now as a solution to this. People are upset that they don't know what happened. Uh, now we hear that the officer has was beaten badly and has many uh, injuries. You know, he didn't have those a couple of days ago. You'd think we, we should know that. But the fact is, is that the government seems to over and over put us in a closet, keep us in the dark, uh, feed us bull crap, and watch us grow mushrooms. So mm -hmm. I'm sick of that, personally. I'm sick of not having the information i'd love to have cameras that are loaded directly to the internet i'd love to see those in in squad cars and i think this is absolutely doable technology it exists today and people weren't talking about this before some very angry people went and set a building on fire that had nothing to do with this so i'm asking you is destroying private property that has nothing to do with this, an effective means of bringing about the conversation. I, I think it's ridiculous to claim that because someone set a building on fire that now there's a conversation about police abuse. That doesn't make any sense. I think I think I think it makes a lot of sense. I'm certainly not standing up for this behavior, right? But I I do think that uh, it is having that effect, right? That this is not uh, an advisable way to go about doing it, but it certainly is because but the government, because no they would just tell us to shut up if they could, right? And what happens is these people are disrupting the economy. It disrupts tax revenue. It it, it pisses off insurance companies. I mean, people who matter start getting upset after people take to the streets and start disrupting the economic activity of the people. It's one thing to uh, to have a protest to disrupt economic activity, to make it undesirable for people to come somewhere and go and get a cup of coffee or whatever kind of disruption we're talking about. But to suggest that this conversation wouldn't be happening had someone not set fire to a privately owned building seems really seems speculative at best. And if you know, if the argument is that it's fire that brings attention, then again, you know, you could set fire to the government uh, facilities and you know still bring that same level of attention. I don't know if that's necessarily what has brought the level of attention. I think it's to me, it's the consistent. Uh, continued activism of people being out in the streets. Now, we can argue about the effectiveness of people going out into the streets to protest, but I think that if you had the continuing on protests, which have pretty much been happening on a daily basis, from what I understand, and a nightly basis in Ferguson, despite the, uh, the, despite the curfews that were put into effect over the weekend, 
if you've got that continuing protest like you did in mm-hmm. Egypt, for instance, that generates news because it gives the news enough time to react. If it's just a bunch of people going and gathering out in front of City Hall for an hour to shout about how they want equal, you know, they want the police to be held accountable, you know, that maybe that'll attract a reporter if you announced in advance that you were going to be there and you had a good relationship with the reporters. Maybe you'd att- attract a reporter to something like that. Kind of like the 420 celebrations here at uh, here in uh, in Keene, they became newsworthy because they happened more than once, right? They kept coming. Right. The people who were smoking pot in Central Square kept coming out at 420 every single day, and despite the fact that people were arrested, they kept coming out and they kept protesting. Same thing here. People keep coming out. They keep doing different things. I don't think it would have mattered. I think that that you know, if that building hadn't been burned down, what was it? Some sort of quickie mart or something like that that was set a fl- set ablaze, from mm-hmm. what I understand. Had that building it not bigger than that, than like a quickie mart, but okay. Uh, it might have been the like pictures. A, yeah, it might have been like a like a discount grocer or something like it that. Looks but, something like that. Uh, but anyway, had had that not burned down, I think we'd all still be having the same conversation. I think all the news headlines would still be there. You'd still have the police arresting the news media. I mean, so I, I'm I think that for someone to focus on that one thing and hold it. Up, <laughs> See, we needed to torch this this uh, private business I, to get I, attention. It's I ridiculous. don't think that they needed to torch a private business to gain the attention. I think torching the police department would have done a much better job <laughs> of starting this conversation. I think if the police are like, wow, if I run around shooting people, angry people charge into my office and try to burn me out of it, well, they'd they be a lot conflict. less likely to behave that way if they were afraid that this was going to happen to them. I don't think they're afraid of it. I think that they um, look for it in many cases. Yeah, I don't think I mean, that's the solution. This obviously, is playing but... cowboys and Indians in a lot of cases for these folks. They they need Indians. The toll-free number tonight. We'd love to hear your thoughts on what you think is effective. Uh, the toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Coming up, we'll tell you what one cop said to some of the protesters in Ferguson. This is Mark Edge of Free Talk Live, and I've got something awesome to share with you. I've recently joined Liberty.me. It's an online city devoted to people who love liberty. Break free of the flame wars and bridge-dwelling denizens of Facebook. You deserve better. You deserve a friendly, ad-free social network where you can chat 24 hours a day with like-minded souls around the world. Attend live interactive classes with experts on economics, finance, politics, and money. Access a vast library of books and discuss them with your reading group. Better your life with exclusive self-help guides on investing, self-defense, homeschooling, security, healthcare, saving money, and starting a business. Become a libertarian luminary yourself and get paid in the process by publishing your works on liberty.me. Get tipped via PayPal and Bitcoin. The first step towards freedom is to invest in yourself. Start your free 30-day trial now at liberty.me. I love being a member of liberty.me and I think you will too. The first month is free. Sign up and say hello. Policies issued by American General Life Insurance Company, Houston, Texas. Not available in all states. For details, visit AIGdirect.com. It takes a lot of courage to face your own death, but I'm glad I finally did. See, I was putting off getting life insurance to protect my family, even though I knew it was important. Then my neighbor's husband died. I watched her struggle emotionally and financially. It really made me face reality. If my husband died, how would I pay the mortgage, the car payments, or keep up the life the kids and I had? I realized I needed to get us life insurance right away. So I called AIG Direct. In less than five minutes, I had a quote. I was shocked at how affordable it is. Just $14 a month for $250,000 of term life coverage. I feel so much better knowing my family has protection. Call AIG Direct right now for a free no-obligation quote. The call takes less than five minutes, and you can save up to 70%. Call now, 1-800-463-7479. That's 1-800-463-7479. 1-800-463-7479. The Shire Free Church offers a sanctuary to those seeking an escape from state churches. The Shire Free Church is an interfaith, diverse group of people that may not share identical theological beliefs. As a member in or minister of the Shire Free Church, you are a sovereign individual and may be the faith of your choice. We don't claim to have all of the answers. We are open to all peaceful people. We want to learn from each other. What unifies the Shire Free Church and its diverse members is peace, love, and liberty. There are many paths to God, one for every individual. The Shire Free Church does not define a specific path beyond those parameters that must be your foundation. Peace as your way, love as your guide, and liberty as your light. 
Learn more at church.shiresociety.com. That's church.shiresociety.com. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. If there was a place that liberty-minded people had been elected to political positions and were rolling back government, would you move there? If freedom lovers had secured a 20% voting block and can veto most bad bills, would you move? Well, the time has come to sign the pledge at freestateproject.org. These things have happened in New Hampshire, and you can join us and help. freestateproject.org. Sign up now at freestateproject.org. You're listening to the best Liberty-oriented audio streamed around the clock, on the air, and online. This is the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is Free Talk Live. There is enough time for your call and thoughts, but you have to dial now. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Was on the phone today with uh, one of the, uh, or the owner of the local movie theater here in the area, hoping to be able to announce a movie theater screening, a premiere of the upcoming movie, 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire. Sweet. I, I shouldn't say more than that. I don't want to jinx uh, the deal. It's the same... Um. You don't really believe that, right? I don't know, man. I don't like letting stuff out. Whether it jinxes the deal or not, Mark, it looks bad when you announce something and it doesn't happen. Agreed. So I like to make sure that things are going to happen first. We did a movie premiere here two years ago, actually, in 2012 for Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree, which, by the way, has been out now for two over two years at this point on uh, on YouTube. Anyway, we actually did an actual theatrical premiere of Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree, which was a movie that I am so proud to have been uh, the executive producer of. And you can go and watch it for free, by the way, at victimlesscrimespree.com. And if you click on the premiere button, there's like, you know, the menu at the top, look at the real life premiere. You can actually see what it was like when we had our real life premiere. Derek J rolled up in the police cruiser and got out of the police cruiser as he kind of came up to this uh, star studded event for his movie premiere. So we're hoping to do that again this year. And I'm hoping it'll end up being during Keenvention, if all can uh, go as planned. So stay tuned over at Keenvention.info for the latest on that. And, of course, the 101 Reasons film is basically the 101 reasons that you should consider moving to New Hampshire if you love the ideas of freedom. And I think that's going to be uh, I think it's going to be a great product. Uh, Bo Davis, who is the very same guy who edited Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree, is in charge of editing this film. So I expect the quality level of the presentation will be very good. And that's why I signed on as one of the assistant producers for it. So check out. 100 and, uh, 101 reasons film.com is their web, website 101 reasons film.com for the latest on that as we continue um, we're going to try Nathan one more time he uh, had some audio issues before Nathan have you gotten those ironed out are you with us I hope so yes you're there go ahead so I watched this video on YouTube called how the libertarian party saved my life and if it's not too personal I wanted to ask a few questions about it that's fine with me. It's my it's my video, video he's referring to. Yeah, okay. this is the New New York Libertarian Party. Or the yeah, this is one? when I was uh, when I was uh, in. Uh, well, let, let's let uh, Nathan ask his question and then okay, I'll sure. explain it to him. Okay. Well, uh, it is a video of him talking about what he's going to do when he moves to New Hampshire, and uh, I think Ian gets a name drop. And uh, he talked about uh, or Chris talked about an incident in two thousand nine where he was uh, arrested for a um, DUI, I guess. And at first, I didn't believe what I was hearing, so I had to go on the internet and look. And yes, it is a felony if you're caught with a DUI for the second time in New York. It's a Class E felony. And so I guess I was just wondering. Um, 
how did it, how did it like ruin your life? And uh, and what did you think of the state of New York after that that you didn't think before that? Well, I would I would start off by saying that my life is clearly not ruined, right? I'm I'm here in New Hampshire. I'm on a radio show. I'm surrounded by wonderful people, so my life is not ruined. But it felt that way at the time. Mm-hmm. So I was charged with a felony in New York for basically being one point over the legal limit on a DUI charge because nine years and two days prior I got caught sleeping in my car because I didn't want to be driving because I was drunk. So this Which is, is also illegal. What's that? To sleep in your car it with is, the keys in the ignition, or in some cases, some states with the keys on the floor, it, right? In New York, you can be charged even if the keys are on the floor. My keys yeah. happen to be in the, in the ignition. It was cold out, and I had the heat on. But in yeah, any you case- You freeze uh, instead of- Stay warm. Exactly. Well, well, if I if I if I was freezing to death in the car with the keys on the floor, I'd still been charged right. in New York. In any case, <laughs> so so what what uh, what happened with me was yeah they tr- they threatened me with four and a half years in a state prison, wow. and uh, this is what like led me to the ideas of liberty that I say this is crazy. I didn't hurt anybody. I wasn't even like I was out on a date. I was like trying to seduce this girl. I didn't want to be a sloppy drunken mess, and uh, you know all these all of these things sort of happened, and I started looking into the ideas of liberty. And this is how I found the Libertarian Party at the time. And I've and I've told the story before in many private discussions that like the, the thing is, at the time, what's going through my head is this can't happen. I have to stop them, you know, and and the and the feeling that I have to stop this group of violent armed people who can kill me leads me to the conclusion that, you know, like I should just go out like blasting, you know, mm. and uh, and this is. Something that, you know, has been on my mind, you know, for a long time. It's not completely out of my mind, frankly. I still think about these things. And when I got in with the Libertarian Party... Uh, Thanks for not doing it, by the way. Yeah, I mean, it's, I like hanging out it's with you. going swimmingly, you know, yeah. so so this whole living thing, there, you yeah. know, there's a lot to it. <laughs> uh, but when I got involved with the Libertarian Party, I, I was kind of like looking, the idea was I was looking for something to die for, frankly, and mm. I found something to live for that like I wanted, Aww. the 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 idea was that I, uh, I, I went in and like I knew that like if I just went out blasting as this guy who just got a DUI that they're like, okay, who cares, right? Mm-hmm. So I think that I'm going to like try to make this uh, more of a story. I'm going to run for Congress, right? A former congressional candidate goes out blasting. You know, this is a little different. You know, um, you know, a talk radio show host goes out blasting. This is a little different. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, and what happens is as I'm going forward, I'm finding things that I can do instead of getting myself killed. And this mm. is, you know, the gist of the story of how the Libertarian Party say by life that this was my introduction to all of these things. Interesting. And, uh, and how you were, long, go ahead, Nathan. Uh, sorry. And you were actually fired merely because you were charged with a felony? Is that correct? My job required me to drive, and my driver's license was suspended. Mm-hmm. So I lost my job, and then I lost my apartment. I, I lost, you know, a lot. I lost everything that I had. So what was, you know, I was a guy with nothing to lose, and that's the position that I was in, yeah. Wow, that's a... Uh... The job story, liked yeah. me. They were good people. They actually did hire me back later on. Huh. Uh, when oh, I got okay. when I got my driver's license, they actually did hire me back. I mean, I was very good friends with them, but it was a, a a thing. They even like kept me on when I ultimately went to jail. But the thing was that my job required me to drive, and without a driver's license, you know, their insurance wasn't going to have it. So, had the Libertarian Party not existed, uh, then maybe you wouldn't be in the same place. I certainly wouldn't be in the same place. Where I would be, who knows? Yeah. But you know, the, what what introduced me to it was like I actually went to like a tea party that was run by Gigi Bowman, who was involved with the Campaign for Liberty and the Libertarian Party. Who knows? Maybe I would have gotten involved in Campaign for Liberty or something like that. But mm-hmm. you know, the Libertarian Party was sort of like introduced me to this, encouraged me to run for office. You know, told me that I was going to do wonderful things. I did nothing with the Libertarian Party for the most part, but you know, <laughs> it, it introduced me to a lot of things. I started it's studying true. economics and philosophy and history, and it was just fascinating. It was amazing. And that's what got me involved in, you know, all of this. So that's it the- brought me in. I mean, I it was the Harry Brown campaign in the year 2000 that brought me into the liberty movement. Now, of course, you can always make the argument that, well, even in the absence of your interaction with the Libertarian Party, maybe you would have found the ideas of freedom anyway. But, uh, you know, when a lot of people talk crap about politics and running for political office, all I have to do is point to my own story. I mean, it was because of the libertarians involved. What about Ron Paul? In poli- Ron Paul's brought a lot of people into the movement, no doubt. Uh, but it was because my involvement in politics, specifically with the Libertarian Party, as futile as that seemed to be, you know, no no Libertarian candidate ever got more than 2 or 3% in a three-way election in my time in Florida. Um, so, you know, and for all the thousands of people that I'd done re- uh, outreach to, 
on behalf of the Libertarian Party. Not a single one of them ever showed up to a Libertarian Party meeting. Right. So it was an important first step for me on this long journey of coming to understand what the ideas of liberty are. And I'm, I'm grateful that they're there. I think that they're a shadow of their former self. I mean, the, the Libertarian Party today, is certainly at the national level, is uh, is a really just a it's a shameful uh, version of its of its You're former just self. Mad about uh, Bob Barr? I mean, you don't think they redeemed themselves <laughs> a bit with Gary Johnson? I don't. Uh, barely, barely. I mean, Gary Johnson certainly is a better candidate than Bob Barr, but he's not a true libertarian. You he's know, not the, a, the, he's the, no Harry Brown. The, the he's thing, not Harry Brown. The thing with the Libertarian Party, and it, and it's and the same problem applies to Gary Johnson as it does to Bob Barr, is that they're supposed to be spreading. A consistent message yeah. and they are not and they are picking up whoever is they want to be low tax liberals and this is like a this was a word that was used by uh, uh david coke when he ran as a vice presidential candidate for the libertarian party back in the 70s that he said oh i'm a low tax liberal well that's not what libertarianism is that's not what it is i don't want to cut taxes and legalize pot i want to stop people from aggression this right. is Non-aggression, and if you explain that to people consistently over the last 44 years, you know, we would have accomplished a great deal more than with this low-tax liberal crap. Yeah, and it's that's why it's unfortunate to watch the Libertarian Party fail at their message in the last decade, basically. Basically, since the Michael Badnarik campaign of, uh, of 2004. Well, Badnarik's a constitutionalist. Um, I mean, you know, the but fact that still we pretty were... hardcore. Sure, absolutely. And look, Mark, I don't require 100% adherence, but, you know, 95 to 100% is a pretty good range, and their candidates have probably been down in the 60% range. Maybe Gary Johnson's a 70% if you give him uh, a little more credit than he deserves. But the Libertarians were supposed to have a candidate that understood the principles of liberty and communicated those principles. And that's what Harry Brown did so very, very effectively in 2000, and the candidates since then haven't matched him. Sure, uh, Johnson got a million votes in the last Johnson election. Vetoed, so what? V Johnson vetoed more bills than any other than all the other governors. Thanks, Nathan, for the call. But he combined. didn't. He didn't release a single person from the prisons because of the war on drugs. Where's his compassion? Not good enough. Well, not definitely not good enough. Not for a libertarian. We'll see you tomorrow night. FreeTalkLive.com. ChristopherCantwell.com is his site. Listen, you've heard the commercials before. Whether you owe 15000 or $15 million in tax debt to the IRS or state, we can help. On a never-ending payment plan? Penalties and interest killing you? Missing tax returns? Being garnished or levied? Not a problem. If you qualify, we can remove levies and garnishments within days or even hours of hiring our firm. If you've been summonsed, or even worse, receiving tax warrants in the mail, call right now. Are you a business owner with back payroll taxes? Is the IRS or state threatening to close your business you've worked so hard to build? Protect yourself and your business. Even if you've tried in the past, new guidelines could potentially qualify you today. So what are you waiting for? We can take that tax monkey off your back. Call the Tax Monkey now, 800-281-6030, 800-281-6030, 800-281-6030, that's 800-281-6030. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Juicy Juice, 100% juice, providing a full serving of fruit in every four ounces. Visit us at JuicyJuice.com. When it comes to nutrition, kids need both fruits and vegetables every day to stay healthy and grow. For the ideal mix, your kid should have at least one and a half cups of any veggie or 100% veggie juice and one cup of any fruit or 100% fruit juice a day. For more tips like these, visit us at Parenthood.com slash Your Family Today. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com.